Hi guys, I want to invite you to join the Patreon where you will get some benefits as well as audiobooks that will not be uploaded on YouTube. But Abito never targeted Kirito. He turns his head towards Haku. Kirito's eyes widen. Shit. Kirito did not have much time to do anything. He activated his observation of Haki. And there was nothing that he could do. Can't teleport Haku this fast. Teleporting faraway objects needs time and chakra buildup. That's why he can't directly teleport someone from far away from himself during the battle. He can't do anything. Gritting his teeth, he himself teleported near Haku. He did not even have the time to take Haku and teleport away from there. Kirito with the help of the Flying Thunder God was able to push out Haku from the place. But there was a sacrifice. This was the best thing he could do to save himself and Haku at the same time. Even after covering this left hand with Haki. It did not work. Haku who was warped around Kirito's one arm right now was first stunned and then shocked. It took some time for her to understand what happened. Then she looked at Kirito's left arm. There was nothing there. His arm was gone. Kirito did not care. The Hokage world has a way to replace the arm with an artificial one. Saving Haku was more important. There are not many people in this world that he values. His brother, Ino, and Asuna are a few of them. Definitely, Haku is also a part of that group. Kirito Kuen, your, your arm. Haku almost shudders to that line. No biggie, it's just an arm. Kirito quickly said. Although he said this to not let Haku blame herself Kirito himself was very angry. I will be taking this, thank you, Kirito said and took a chakra suppressing senbon from Haku. Kirito still likes this combination of weapon and seal from Haku. Brace yourself. From this point onwards I can no longer hold back any more for the sake of others. Kirito said slowly but a dangerous aura was coming out of him. It was like a nuclear bomb was about to erupt. Abito too felt this and was on alert. Kirito was already in sage mode. The conqueror's Haki which he was holding back all this time was about to erupt. Conan who was fighting with Haku already left after sensing someone approaching Nagato. Kirito touched Haku then from his only intact arm and teleported her far away from the battlefield. His eyes were already gleaming reddish. Haku suddenly arrived where most of the Kanoha ninja was. It was much further away from the main battleground. Kirito who was standing much further away from Abito looked at at him. Just a mere look was enough to make Abito's back get wet with cold sweat. The look was just like his teacher the fourth Hokage when he looked at an enemy. But this was much much more dangerous. Unconsciously he activated his Kemui. But Kirito hardly cares. That girl is my precious person. If you want to take her life, you better be ready to die. Kirito said and vanish. But before his hockey, the sound was vibrating in the entire Kanoha. Almost everyone was able to hear it. The powerful words pierced the soul of everyone around. And then he vanishes from his place. Finally using the seal he put on Abito all that time ago in the forest of death. Coming right in front of Abito. And then it happened. Unleashing his most powerful conqueror's hockey enhance with sage mode, a force that emanates the user's willpower, he aimed to totally overwhelm Abito both mentally and physically. The conqueror's hockey manifested as an overwhelming aura, a palpable pressure that gripped the entire village. Villagers and ninjas alike felt an inexplicable sense of dread as the hockey exerted its dominance. Even the real world was shaking. The ground under Kirito's feet was shaking. The small particles of dust started to float. There were cracks forming in the ground. Kirito's eyes glowed with an intense and commanding presence as he focused his will on Abito. As Kirito's will intensified, a ripple effect spread through the area. Abito, despite his Sharingan and other formidable abilities, found himself momentarily paralyzed by the sheer force of Kirito's overwhelming determination. The conqueror's hockey, a force of intimidation and domination, began to affect not only Abito but every individual in Kanoha. Ninjas and civilians alike fell to their knees, unable to resist the overwhelming pressure exerted by Kirito's will. Some weak will also cough up blood from their mouth and some were forming from the mouth. The sky darkened, 
and the ground trembled as if the very earth acknowledged the clash of these extraordinary forces. It was like an apocalypse was about to come. This made even a Beto in the Kamui space stunned. Deactivating his Kamui by force. Kirito on the other hand was only standing in front of a Beto. Staring at him right in the eyes. A Beto long stunned even forgot to breathe. Kirito took out the Senban and slowly put it right in the middle of the Abito's forehead. First let me take care of these godforsaken eyes, Kirito said slowly but it almost sounded like the devil whispering in Abito's ear. But he could not do anything. His body was not moving. Kirito then slowly used his only hand to take out Abito's left eye. That eye is the most problematic one. The pain finally made Abito being able to move. But that was the reason why Kirito used the chakra suppressing Senban. He directly targeted the first gate of chakra inside Abito. This blocks Abito's chakra temporarily. He was not able to activate his Kamui anymore because of that. Kirito still did not hurry. He has calculated everything with the help of Haki. He then took out Abito's right eye. This cheat like ability was now in his hands. Now die. Kirito said and beheaded Abito standing there paralyzed and less like asleep ready to be slaughtered. Kirito saw Abito's head falling to the ground. He signed then. He still has one Shirignan on him. Still not death. That bastard. Kirito mutters but he cannot do anything. He does not have time anymore. He already has lost too much blood on his lost arm. He needs to heal himself. Naruto who just beat Sasuke and he himself did not have much power left suddenly felt intense pressure coming from the place where Kirito was fighting. He already knows about Haki. In fact, Kirito has tried teaching him. They both are brothers and have the same blood. There are not many reasons why Naruto can't learn this right. But it never worked. Only later does Kirito realize that it's because of the system he is able to use Haki. So yes, Naruto already knows about Haki. Kirito in fact have trained Naruto to resist conqueror's Haki. This Haki was to handle the killing intent of others. But this was not even one-tenth of this power. Of course, what Naruto was feeling right now was Kirito's all-out super Haki outbrust. Even Sage of Six Path will feel this pressure let alone him. But the good thing was that Kirito stopped pretty quickly. Naruto thanks to his Sage mode was barely able to resist the Haki from that distance. It's a good thing that there was such a distance between him and Kirito. After he established himself. Naruto rushed towards Kirito. He wanted to know what pushed Kirito to this extent. By the time he reached Kirito, he saw Kirito healing himself. He noticed that Kirito's left arm was gone. His eyes widened and was surprised to the core. But before he can say anything. Kirito opens his mouth first. Naruto, good thing that you are here. Go to the east. Jiraiya should be there. Help him out. He should be fighting the real pain alone there. Kirito said. Naruto listened to this but then looked at Kirito's lost arm and there was a little anger in his face. Oi, Naruto. Don't worry about this. It's just an arm. Remember, not to lose your mind and always stay focused. Kirito said seeing that Naruto was getting angry and might replace using his talk no jutsu with his fist. You can't do that brother. Many people's lives depend on you. Kirito mutters to himself. With that said. Naruto although unwillingly, ran towards Nagato. Kirito just signed and then after completely stopping his bleeding, he started walking toward other Kanoha ninja. He wanted to see what happened to Tsunade this time around. If she is fine and has not turned into a mummy after healing others. Then he would like her to make him a hand. With Naruto. When Naruto arrived he saw Jiraiya fighting with Conan. Both of them almost arrived there at the same time. Jiraiya had to find his way around while Conan already knew that place. And naturally right now Nagato is defenseless. So Conan will not let anyone near Nagato. Not even Jiraiya. Of course, Jiraiya too did not want to kill Conan and was holding back. Naruto was about to help out Jiraiya but at that time, Conan stopped. She stopped because Nagato suddenly said to let both Jiraiya and Naruto come to him. Kirito at this time totally leaves the problem to Naruto and Jiraiya. He has no way to force Nagato to revive others. 
While walking he also noticed all the destroyed buildings around him. Man, I was planning to buy that house after I turned 19, Carito complains. He could not do anything and just sighed. Slowly walking towards the shelter he notices many civilians there. He also saw medical ninjas healing others. Even Tsunade, Sakura and Ino were doing the same. Oh my god, Kirito. What happened? It was Ino who saw Kirito's arm and said this. Nothing. My arm decided to do some cross-dimension travel without me. Kirito rolled his eyes. Ino and others also by now were completely used to Kirito's sarcasm. She just rushes towards Kirito and looks at his arm. But there was nothing. Kirito too is a really powerful medical ninja. Of course, he can heal himself. Kirito after seeing the flustered Ino just signed and then patted her head. I am fine Ino. Don't worry. I am just here to see whether others are fine or not. Kirito said and smiled. Ino only then let Kirito go. Kirito then looked at Tsunade. She was not in her mummy form. Maybe not healing the entire village saves her a lot of chakra. Naruto after understanding the situation said. Nagato, I get it. Pain, loss, suffering. I've been through it all too. But revenge won't bring anyone back. We can change this world together. Change. Look around, Naruto. This world is a cycle of pain. It's all I've ever known. Nagato just retorted. No, no Nagato. Naruto's right. We both have seen the darkness in this world, but I've also seen the light. You have the power to make a difference. Jiraiya said. I used to be alone, just like you. I was full of anger and hatred, but people believed in me. They never gave up, and because of that, I changed. You don't have to walk this path alone. Naruto added. Change. How can one person change anything? Nagato was tried and after seeing his master's face again. He could not help but narrow his eyes and asked. It starts with understanding. Naruto has the power to connect with people, even those who have suffered the most. Jiraiya answer. Nagato, let's break this cycle together. Let's create a world where pain and suffering don't dictate our actions. Naruto said with full power of talk no jutsu altering the common sense of his enemy and turning to bring him to the bright side. There's a moment of silence as Nagato contemplates Naruto's words. Slowly, he reaches out, grasping Naruto's hand. K.O. 2 Naruto could have sworn that he heard those words. Softly Nagato said. You're a stubborn one, Naruto Uzumaki. Let's see if your talk can truly change the world. As the trio stands united, a surge of chakra emanates from Nagato. His eyes glow with newfound resolve. Suddenly, the devastated landscape of the hidden leaf village begins to shift. Rinne rebirth. After the pain attack, the village was in a complete restoration phase. The good thing about this time compared to the canon was that the village was not completely ruined. Kirito was currently in Kanoha's hospital. Ino just won't let him leave. He actually once tried to even replace himself with a clone but for some reason, Ino was able to find him. After he realized that Haku was working with Ixno and put a tracking seal on him. That traitor. Kirito could not help but sigh. After four days of torturous boredom, he faces while lying down in the hospital bed, staring down the boring white ceiling of the room. Kirito finally was about to get discharged. Haku are we done yet? Kirito could not help but ask this. Yes yes, we are almost done. All the reports are fine. Beside your left arm. You are totally intact and fine. Ino replied from the sideline. Kirito just rolled his eyes. Saying internally that he hardly cares about it. Just let me go you mad women. Or I might become mad if I have to stare at this white ceiling anymore. But before Kirito can really try launching his Hiration and try once again to run away, only for Ino or Haku to somehow find him and drag him back to the hospital. He heard a familiar voice suddenly. Now enough you two. I can't let one of my best shinobi to lie around here while the entire village demands to see their hero. Tsunade had a snickering smile on her face. Hero. Kirito narrowed his eyes. 
And then he started to have a very bad feeling about this. Oh no, no 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 no. You did not. Kirito asked. Huh, why you are reacting like this? It's a good thing. Tsunade said but the smirk on his face was widening. Fuck good thing women. Naruto was supposed to be that hero. Without this, the story progression will be even more different. Kirito wanted to complain but there was nothing that he could do about it. But what he can do about it? Tell her that you are going against the wishes of the almighty creator Kishimoto-sama. He just signed. No, he will not give this woman the satisfaction of asking why she did it. He already knows why. Because she knew that Kirito didn't like public exposure. It started after the Kanoha crush. After that incident, he single-handedly saved the village. He was nothing less than a hero for the villagers for a short time. However, after that incident, he was not in the village for long as he went after Tsunade to bring her back and also the entire time travel drama. But then he was able to see the true horror of fangirls. And those were not the only problems he had to face. Kirito just shook his head a little and then sighed. He really did not want to talk with this girl anymore. He needs something good to eat. Eating Sakura's food for the past four days was a bigger battle than fighting pain for him. The only grace of mercy he found was Haku. Her good is quite delicious. Ino wasn't there as she immediately had a mission to complete. So, I am off. And don't come after me. It's pointless, I have already found that micro seal you put on my forehead protector. Kirito said and vanished from his place. I am even surprised that you both even able to keep him here for this long. Tsunade genuinely was proud of her two disciples. Kirito's first mission after getting out of that damn hospital was to raid Ichiraku Ramen. Thirty minutes was more than enough to devour the entire food stock they had for an entire week. He was damn hungry. After that, he went out to find Jiraiya. He wanted to know what exactly happened. But after sensing that Jiraiya is not in the village for some reason. He had to settle for Naruto. Yo. Kirito appears in front of Naruto out of nowhere like a ghost. Naruto who was balancing on top of a wire immediately lost his foot and fell down. Minutes later. After doing some makeshift bandaging. Kirito finally asked Naruto what exactly happened after he and Jiraiya went to find Nagato. Kirito was honestly surprised by just how much what Naruto said to him was similar to the canon. After that, the entire day just went on. He had nothing better to do anyway. He just kept on wasting his time with Naruto. But that did not last long. On the next day itself. Kirito was summoned by the Hokage. Kirito had no idea what going on now. Not only he doesn't remember much after the pain arc but at the same time, right now the story is totally messed up. Enter the Hokage office he notices something. The situation was not looking much better right now. Something surely has happened. Kirito mutters to himself. He looked at Tsunade who was frowning hard and even Jiraiya was back by this time. What's going on? Tell us already or just call us later when you are ready to talk. All this silence was making Kirito irritated. Tsunade glare at Kirito. Kirito just glared back. After spending so much time with Kirito. Everyone knows that after a particular glare which ironically matches Minato's, I am gonna kill you look. It's better not to mess with Kirito. The last fight with Pain was a really good reminder for everyone. Even Tsunade is not an exception to this. In the past, once Kirito gave this look to her and sadly she did not realize what it meant. Well, let's say that after that, sitting was really hard for her for one day. And that's after her became a super doctor in this world. And no, he did not bang her you perverts. So after Kirito pretty much owned everyone in the Hokage office with just a look. The meeting finally started. Kirito also noticed that many of the clan heads were also present there. Like Hyuga, Nara and etc. After the invasion, I asked Jiraiya to increase intel gathering on Akatsuki. And I don't know whether it's a good thing or not but we are not the only ones attacked by the Akatsuki. Many of the Jinchuriki are already gone. In fact, the Jinchurikis which are left are the Nine Tails 2 host. Tsunade said after settling down. Let me explain more, Jiraiya said taking over. 
My intel network gave me the information about how the eight-tailed Jinchuriki, Killer B, Rakage's brother, is attacked by Itachi Achiha, a missing mean from Kanoha. Rakage has summoned the Hokage Summit after 30 years for the first time. It is no longer just about Akatsuki and one or two villages anymore. Akatsuki although lost many powerful individuals but now they have eight out of nine Jinchurikis. They alone have enough power to destroy one or even two villages if they use the biju. Jiraiya said. Hmm, this is so much like the canon. Seems like the world will somewhat correct itself no matter the case. Well, I better not jinx it. Kirito thought to himself. Kirito after that pretty much switched on his, I don't give a shit mode and deliberately miss all the meetings until Tsunade said this. So I will be attending the upcoming 5 Kage Summit. She said that while looking at both Kirito and Naruto. Naruto was scratching his head because the level of conversation was way past his IQ level. Thank goodness that Kanoha has won Narashikamaru for this future knucklehead Hokage. And she was looking at Kirito, the reason being that Kirito sleeping while leaning on the room wall. Naruto quickly shook Kirito to wake him up. Kirito groggily woke up and looked around. Oh so we are done, Kirito said with a plain voice. Both Tsunade's and Sakura's eyes brows were twitching at this time. Tsunade was about to say something. But Kirito beat her to the punch. So we are going to the summit. I guess that it will be in the land of iron considering that it's neutral ground. Kirito said. He might have not listened to what happened but he knew the plot. Everyone was a little stunned by this. In their mind, Kirito who did not listen to the entire conversation and still being able to guess the ending of the conversation is just insane. We are leaving tomorrow, Tsunade replied. Who is coming with us, I asked. Who said you are coming? Tsunade narrowed her eyes. Bitch, please. If not me then who? Kirito almost rolled his eyes. One, because I have beaten the shit out of all the Akatsuki till now, I am somewhat of a pro at that right now. Two, because I am the only person who have any bit of information about those Akatsuki bastards. And lastly, because I am me. Kirito Namikaze. The name is enough to bring pressure on the Kages. Especially after what kind of information they have gotten from their spies in the village about the pain and my fight. Kirito said and smirked. Sounded a lot more narcissistic when he said it but again there is no lie in there. This time around, almost everyone's eyes were twitching but hardly anyone could deny the facts. So after that Tsunade coughs and ends the meeting. One minute, I am going as well, Naruto shouted. And here I just started to wonder why my dear brother still has not realized that he is not in the mission list. Kirito was hoping that he forget that fact. And by the looks of Tsunade, she was hoping the same. You can't do that Naruto. Going out of the village right now for you is not safe. Tsunade said. Kirito too thought about it a little but honestly, he don't see any problem at all. Not only Naruto himself right now is strong enough to handle pretty much anything. But Kirito also has taken care of that nasty cheat of Abito. So there will be no problem with someone appearing right in the middle of the meeting hall and catching all of us off guard when our pants were down like in the cannon. And in the end. Kirito himself is going. But he still did not intervene in Naruto's and Tsunade's shouting match. He had more important things to spend his time on. So Kirito before either Tsunade or Naruto drag him into the conversation, launches his Hiration technique and vanishes from there. Oi, Kirito help me out here, Naruto shouted. Brat put some sense into your brother's head, Tsunade shouted not too late. Sorry for the late but it's finally here, I will soon be changing the chapter no or sequence so it won't be a problem even after getting released from the hospital, I was not left alone by the likes of Ino. I have to say that I am lucky to have someone like her in my life. It's strange how everything even started. Have you taken your meds? Ino asked, she was wearing casual clothes right now. It was her off day from the shinobi business. I looked at her and saw her big moist eyes staring at my non-existent arm. There was sadness there. Something which I could tell just by her expression. Had to say that frown doesn't suit her face at all. I shifted my eyes a little down and saw the fair milky skin tone of her skin with the small cute mouth. She was wearing jeans with a normal cream-colored crop top. They suited her well and looked quite erotic with that tone and slim stomach of her. Why are you suddenly staring? 
Ino noticed my eyes on her stomach and asked narrowing her eyes a little. You started it, I said while pointing towards my, now gone, left arm. She is sad near me and leans onto me slightly. Haku told me, you did it for her, Ino said but there was no anger or any other feeling in her voice like he stated a fact, and nothing more. If you are jealous then I don't mind losing the other one for you, I said with a little smile on my face. Oh you are going to lose things for me, but ain't the arm, Eno said with a smirk in his cute little face. I could feel her melons pressing on my chest slightly. I didn't even realize it but she was much closer to me right now, enough close that I could kiss her by just leaning my face forward. And what would that be, I played along. I know where she was going with it. Not like I disliked it. In fact, I would have crossed this last step and claimed her virginity long ago but time never allowed. You, Eno said, staring into my eyes with her pearls looking at me and not even blinking. I didn't even think twice before linking my lips with hers. A soft and smooth feeling immediately assaulted me. I relished that feeling but I desired more. And clearly, I was not the only one as the beautiful girl who I would not hesitate even once to give the wedding ring also started touching me down there. Having only one hand is troublesome, Sasuke from the Boruto timeline has my respect. But I use the one I have with skill. I started by slowly caressing her face while she was furiously kissing me and made my way down slowly. I slowly grabbed her breasts, giving them a light squeeze, and kept my hands there for a little while to check for any rejections. There was none, I became bolder and put my hand inside her crop top. It was easy enough to do. She too was not holding back, in fact, she looked more desperate than me. I didn't waste any time and directly pulled out her small crop top which was barely holding on to her giant melons. After Hinata, she is best in this area, the moment they got out of the restraint of the top, I saw two big soft mountains jiggling in front of me. No matter how much physics I learned in my last life, I couldn't understand their physiques. I am not sure why but from then on I turned off my logical mind and my little brother took over my movements. I wanted to taste them. And so I did. Triple A, Amon brings me back to reality. I found myself not only sucking on Eno but biting her. Sorry, I wasn't thinking much, I immediately said. But she didn't reply. She just kissed me. Maybe she too had stopped thinking for herself and now her womanly instincts were in control. Putting my body weight on her, I put her down to the bed, I couldn't wait anymore. With one hand, taking out my pants was a hard task, funny thing, Eno smacked my hands away. She looked to be in more hurry than me. I just decided to step back to let the girl take the lead. Not like I couldn't have stopped her even if I wanted to. But then suddenly, I remembered something, something which brought me out of my lust and I quickly grabbed Eno's hand. Eno who was just one step away from removing my underwear and ravishing me, at least by the look she was giving me, stopped when I grabbed her hand with force. What, Eno asked in confusion, by her tone I can say that she was thinking that she did something wrong, maybe acted too forceful or something. But before her thinking takes her to multiple outcomes which are far worse than, she is being a little too assertive, I said. I love you, and that's why I wanted to tell you this Eno. Never got a chance but. I said but before I couldn't complete what I wanted to say. Eno spoke first. You like someone else as well, Eno said completely breaking my plan to slowly break this news to her. You know, I couldn't help but ask out loud. Eno at this just gave me an are you for real look. Girls have very good instincts you know. They can say when their man is cheating on them, Eno said with narrowed eyes. No no, I didn't cheat. I didn't do anything, but, I said and mumbled my last words. But you ended up falling for her, didn't you, Eno said like she already knew what I was thinking. Yes, I just, coming clear with her. I understand if you don't agree. But I. I was saying but before that, Eno shushed me with putting her finger on my lips. I don't care who she is, we will talk about that bitch later on, right now you are not allowed to think about any other girl than me, you understand Namikaze, right now you are just mine, Eno said with a sultry voice sent shivers throughout me. She spat away my hand from which I was still holding her hands unconsciously and removed the last bit of layer which was holding back my raging boner. The moment she removed the underwear, she was greeted by a nine-inch monstrosity ready to ravish anything in its path. I personally was a little worried about its size, 
considering that if the penis is too big then it might cause discomfort but after seeing her niffle face. I took back what I was thinking. I saw her gulping and a smirk came to my face. Guess I need to satisfy her to the degree that even if she hates me after this sex. She has to come back for this dick. I first try to write a lemon. Don't be too harsh I will improve later. Next part will come but it won't be the next chapter. But it will pick up from where this one is ending. The next day, a really strong lineup of excellent shinobi was ready to travel with Tsunade and protect her. Dude, she is the Hokage. And above that, she is Tsunade fucking Senju. What kind of protection does she even need? Kirito really wanted to say this but he held himself back. Looking around he notices Kakashi, Haku, Naruto and many other umbu ready to depart. But Kirito is not so bad in politics that he does not understand what exactly going on. It's not for defense as much as it is for showing off. Kirito was sure that all the Kages would be bringing their best shinobi as a guard. It's almost a dick measuring contest. Well, Tsunade and may have none but still. Kirito in fact was more interested in the current Kage of Sunigakure. Last he knew that Gara was kidnapped and there is no other Kage level shinobi in the village right now. Okay, we should be going now, Tsunade said. But before any reply comes, she notices Sakura running towards her. Sakura, what happened? Tsunade could not help but sighed. Why kids are so unmannered these days? First this Kirito who became a complete opposite of that brat Minato and then her own disciple who have same anger issues as her. So you do agree that you are old, Kirito muttered slowly but Tsunade heard him loud and clear. What did you say? There were already veins popping on her forehead. How the hell did this bastard know what I was thinking? Tsunade had no idea. Kirito just smirked a little and replied. Nothing nothing. Just thinking of a punchline for the time when suddenly the Akatsuki bastards will infiltrate the Five Kage Summit and then I will have to fight them. You know, saving the day and being the hero. Kirito said. Tsunade including Sakura, Kakashi, Haku and even Naruto rolled their eyes. What should I say, maybe? This is as far as you go. I just recently beat the shit out of that ugly eye masochist of your group who likes pain so much. So you better fuck off or I will show you a whole new meaning of pain. Kirito said with a sage-like voice. Others were looking at him with deadpan looks. What? You think that I come up with amazing punch lines out of thin air? Kirito rolled his eyes. After the daily dose of non sisi everyone had enough and was ready to depart but then suddenly Kirito noticed a bird coming towards him. It was not an ordinary bird of course. It's a messenger bird. Others also noticed and stopped. Will Jiraiya do in all this time? He will be playing part-time Hokage while we are away from home. There is always a Stark in Winterfell. I mean a Kage in Kanoha. Kirito quickly took the piece of paper the bird was carrying and then fed some homemade candies to the bird. Yes, his bird-like candies. Deal with it. Kirito what is it, Tsunade asked. Kirito looked at the piece of paper and the only thing written there was, brothers. Kirito instantly took a serious posture. Brothers mean Sasuke and Itachi. Meaning finally the time when both of them will fight each other has come. But how? Sasuke is in the Kanoha prison. There was already a bad feeling in Kirito's gut. Man, why the hell, this plot twist is getting worse and worse, Kirito mutters slowly. And this time he didn't deliberately let Tsunade hear him. But the sudden change in his facial features was enough for Tsunade and others to see that whatever was written on that piece of paper was not good. What happened, Tsunade asked. Just got disturbing news. Say, Sasuke is still imprisoned, right? Kirito asked with doubt. Of course he is, Tsunade said with confidence. I see, then do one thing. Send someone to check on him. Tsunade wasn't sure why but she did it nonetheless. Result? He wasn't there. How the hell this happened, Tsunade shouted. Yes, it's terrible. Now I have to come up with another good line when I find that Imo and beat him. Kirito jokes. Everyone gave him a glare which immediately shut him up. Again taking a serious look, he said to everyone. I have somewhere to go. Possible I might find Sasuke. Kirito said with a no-nonsense attitude. 
Tsunade wanted to say something but seeing the serious look on Kirito's face. She knew that there is no changing his mind now. Sigh. Sometimes she thinks that she is Hokage but only in name. Kirito was about to go before anyone said anything but at this time, Sakura grabbed his only arm. Take me with you, Sakura said. What, that's a dangerous place, Kirito replied. Not wanting to travel with the pink head. Take me, Sakura said with a firm voice. Kirito looked at Sakura's green eyes and only saw determination. TCH, women are troublesome. Kirito suppresses his urge to roll his eyes and give in. He could totally go without her but something was telling him that it was not good for his mental peace. Fine, Kirito said and got ready. He looked at Haku who also looked like she wanted to come. Not to mention, Naruto. But wasn't taking anyone else. Even if he gets free Wi-Fi in this godforsaken era of no internet. And with that said, he vanishes from his place with Sakura clutching him like a koala. Sakura, why did you decide to come with me? Kirito could not help but ask. Sakura seemed to ponder about Kirito's question, or at least Kirito felt like that. I. I am not sure. Sakura could not help but mutter this. Kirito too didn't say anything then. Currently, both of them were teleported to the nearest Hiration tag, to Sasuke. Both of them then started to run silently. Dot. You want to say something? Said it already. Kirito couldn't help but look toward Sakura and say. Sakura at this just pursed her lips and looked down. I'm not sure. Sakura said slowly. Maybe others couldn't tell but Kirito could. What does your heart say then? Kirito asked. It's fine to say if you love him. There is no wrong in that. But remember that you might be disappointed when all this shit is over. Kirito couldn't help but say. Honestly speaking, this version of Sasuke has gone a little too far to come back and turn into a green leaf. Kirito glanced at Sasuke, the poor girl was now not even sure what was right and what was wrong. It's fine, don't worry too much about it. There are times when we can't do anything. Just let the time do its thing. It will either fix things or break them. No point worrying about it. Kirito said and then shut up. Sakura when not hearing Kirito talking anymore, looked towards him one more time. I myself am not sure what I want anymore. Sakura clenched her fist and then Sakura sped up to keep up with Kirito. A little further away from both Kirito and Sakura two men were glaring at each other. These two men were none other than Sasuke and Itachi. Today, I will kill you. Came an angry voice. This idiot brother. Itachi could not help but suppress his urge to roll his eyes. A very interesting fight was about to start. Sasuke right now was much stronger than his canon counterpart. He did not waste any time and directly rushed towards Itachi. Poor Itachi has to play with his baby brother even when he is sick, Chidori Steam. Sasuke started with his trademark attack. Itachi still had his stoic expression on his face. But internally, he was frowning. He never wanted something like this to happen. He never wanted the situation to come this far. But life does not go the way he wants to this time round the fight was much easier for Sasuke considering that he himself has the Mangekyo Sharingan. Not like Itachi cared either way, he was about to let himself anyway to erase all that hatred from Sasuke's heart. But now his long-term plan has turned a very bad twist. I wanted you to go back to light, Sasuke. Itachi could not help but wonder. But he knew now that it was really hard to do so. Sasuke has killed a shinobi of Kanoha. Even if Hiruzen Saratobi was alive, this was almost impossible to bring back Sasuke to the village. Well at least through a normal way. Itachi was not sure anymore. The only thing, right now under his power is to give away his life and let the hatred in Sasuke's heart dissipate. Susanu. Itachi thought and a red color Susanu appeared out of nowhere. Sasuke's Chidori was nothing in front of Susanu. Amaterasu. Sasuke mutters and red flames flare up around Susanu. Itachi eyes slightly widen. Seems like my stupid little brother really has gotten stronger. Itachi now, at least had to assurance that even when he is gone. Sasuke will be safe. With his power, he can do that. You, are still weak as ever, 
Itachi said and black fire around Susanoo got sucked inside his Susanoo's sword. Sasuke too was pretty surprised at this. Amaterasu, getting sucked away like that his confidence in his Mangekyo slightly lowered a bit. Sasuke did not stop there, he immediately activated his lightning speed armor, because this rakage lightning armor copy does not have much in terms of defense, rather its only effect is to speed himself up. He developed it just to handle Kirito's speed. Fire style, fireball. Sasuke said and a massive fireball was sent towards Itachi. Itachi who also deactivated his Susanoo because of his health condition, can't activate his Mangio for a long time, saw the fireball coming and sent a fireball of his own. While Sasuke's attack was much more powerful. Itachi was more skilled with his attack, with his fireball, he was able to redirect Sasuke's attack. Itachi then sends a Genjutsu towards his little brother, but being the owner of a Mangekyo Sharingan himself, he just shrugs off the Genjutsu unlike in the canon. Dot in fact, Itachi was only able to put Sasuke under Genjutsu because, at that time, Sasuke only had a normal Sharingan while Itachi had the Mangekyo. While the battle was still going, an uninvited guest was looking at this entire battle from afar. This person was none other than Abito. He currently did not have any Sharingan on him. One of his eyes was hollow from inside, while the other had a normal eye. After Kirito, took his eyes, he was just a shell of his former shell. And there is no doubt that Abito is here to take care of Sasuke. While this was happening, Kirito and Sakura were also rushing towards the place where the fight was happening. Although he did get the information he himself does not believe that he can reach the place in time. Both Kirito and Sakura were rushing at their top speed. But it was already too late. Kirito was the first to notice. There is no chakra fluctuation anymore. Kirito mutters and after looking at Sakura, who is hardly able to keep up with Kirito and majorly slowly him down. Sakura, we need to increase speed, Kirito said and then grabbed Sakura suddenly. Aw. Oh. Sakura was startled by the sudden jerk of moment from Kirito. Kirito did not even give Sakura a second look and the princess carried her. Hold on tight Sakura. I'm gonna speed up. Kirito said. For some reason, he saw Sakura's face turning red. But, right now he didn't care about it. Minutes later. In just under 10 minutes, Kirito crossed almost 50 kilometers distance. He was still carrying Sakura, who was clutching on Kirito for her dear life. Her neatly combed hair was in dismay. Her face with light makeup was looking horrible and clearly, she was the one who was out of breath out of the two people. What happened to her? Eno like a princess carries at that speed. Well, not that speed. Maybe a little slower but still. Kirito ponder. He did not give too much attention to the poor girl anymore and turned around to notice the area. He couldn't help but frown. Kirito could notice the sign of a fight happening here. Amaterasu Kirito saw the black fire still burning on the side. Susanoo he noticed a huge handprint. Something which most likely happened through Susanoo. Kirin the chakra signature was left behind after a powerful lightning style jutsu. Fire style, earth style, lightning style and even wood style jutsu Kirito frowned he almost could see the entire fight happening in front of him. Spotting the blood all around, he can also figure out where Itachi exactly died. And yes, there is no way that Itachi killed Sasuke. TCH, I am late. Kirito could not help but mutter to himself. Kirito really wanted to get Itachi's body if possible. The first thing which came after him was to go after Sasuke but then he looked at Sakura. Well maybe, I should not. Kirito could not help but wonder. Not to mention, he has to go and join Tsunade soon. Another thought came to his mind and suddenly he became angry. That damn Abito now not only have Sasuke on his side but there is a possibility that he take either Itachi's or Sasuke's eyes after this. Kirito thought and then signed. There is nothing left here Sakura. We need to go back. Rest up a little bit and then we are getting out of here, Kirito said sitting beside Sakura. Sakura by this time has calmed down. Hey, I. I wanted to ask you something, Sakura asked. Kirito at this moment, was not in the mood but he nodded to her to go on anyway. You, how did you carry me with Princess Kari with one hand? Sakura asked. Kirito who was not paying attention suddenly looked at Sakura. Good question. 
How the hell did I do that? Kirito opened his mouth to say something but nothing came out. He himself looked confused now. After a few days of travel. Good good, let go, let go. We better not waste more time, Sakura hurried. Kirito just rolled his eyes and finally activated his teleportation technique. Soon, both Kirito and Sakura appear in front of both Tsunade and others. Good thing that Naruto was with them. With him there, Kirito can easily track them. Yo, did you guys miss me, Kirito said the moment he appeared. But he could only see the irritation on Tsunade's face. Okay okay, don't show that face, I clearly had a reason that I took my time, Kirito said. Get ready, in under an hour the Five Kage Summit is gonna commence, Tsunade said and turned around. Well, it's not like I will be even visible. I mostly like am gonna hide with others, Kirito wanted to retort but he refrained from making it after seeing the face of this busted temperamental woman, later on, Tsunade said that only two people could follow her. Considering the power and technique of their arsenal, the most suitable shinobi among them were none other than Kakashi and Kirito. Are you sure that only two people are enough, Sakura asked. Yes, all of them are kages of their villages. If I am taking more shinobi then it will be seen as my lack of confidence in my own strength. Tsunade said. Everyone agreed to this. The reason the kages take bodyguard is not for their safety as much as to show their power and represent their village. A kage himself is a very capable shinobi on his own. There is no need for a guard all the time. Finally, the fight started. Kirito himself was really interested to know who would come from the Sunagate your side. Kirito with others then arrived at the hall where he first noticed the leader of the Land of Iron. For a nation, ruled but samurai, this place sure is well maintained in terms of politics. Kirito thought. Nice to meet you, Hokage-sama, you are the last one to arrive. All the other Kages are already here. Please come in, said Mifune with a smile. But by his look itself, there is no mistaking it that, he is in a tense situation. So many powerful shinobi in his land, all of a sudden. Of course, everyone will be tense, Kirito knew this. When Kirito finally enters the meeting room, he notices all the kages already there, ready to start the meeting. Hokage, you are late. Shouted a big black man with blonde hair that gotta be the rakage, Kirito thought. I apologize for the delay rakage, but now that we are here, we better start the meeting, Tsunade said. Kirito looked around and noticed the same people he saw in the anime. There is rakage from the hidden cloud. Tsuchikage from hidden rock. Mizukage from hidden mist. And finally the Kazakage from hidden sand. In fact, the only person who is different here than the anime is the Kazakage. It's not Gara as he saw. But in fact, it was Chiyo, so, she ended up being the Kazakage after Gara. Makes sense, there is no other person powerful enough in the hidden sand. Kirito mutters to himself and hides with Kakashi like it was planned. Kirito, spread your senses, please tell me if anything wrong happens during the mission, Kakashi whispered slowly. Kirito at this just nodded and then activated his observation hockey. Something which he planned to do anyway, to train in. Soon the meeting started. And unlike usual, Kirito this time listened attentively this meeting was important, the entire world's fate depends on it. Kirito was listening to the meeting, but his entire attention was outside he wanted to know, what was going on outside and whether the same attack would happen here like in the anime. Kirito was not sure but the was ready for anything. In fact, he was hoping that it would happen. This is because only after that did the five villages come together and form the Shinobi Alliance. As the conversation between the Kages was going on, Kirito sensed something. Oh, they are finally here. I was afraid that if they didn't come then I have to make the declaration of war for Akatsuki, on their behalf, Kirito thought. But he did not do anything. He just waited and tried to sense what going on outside. At this time, outside of the hall, Akatsuki people have attacked the guards. Kirito couldn't sense them that well. Stop, you are interfering with the Five Kage Summit, said one of the guards. But just after that, black flames appear and all the guards were burned to crypts. Soon the other guards also ended up rushing to stop the intruders, but none of them were a match to the intruders. In the hall, the conversation was suddenly interrupted when footsteps from outside were heard. Master Mifune, there are intruders. 
We are unable to stop them, said a samurai after he entered. Kirito has already informed about this to Kakashi. Not only this but also how exactly they are facing. Who are they? Reikage could not help but ask. Akatsuki, they are the members of Akatsuki. Sasuke Uchiha with other members of the Akatsuki have attacked us. Said the guard. Only after hearing Akatsuki's name, Reikage agitated and immediately rushed out. That was pretty fast. Kirito wondered. Maybe the speed is comparable to mine. And this time for real. Not like Sasuke, Kirito mutters slowly and wonders whether he can learn the lightning armor. He learned the lightning chakra nature but never practiced lightning jutsu beside his hyperspeed. Nowadays the youngsters are just too impulsive, Anoki the Kage of the Hidden Rock, spoke the first. Chiyo on the side could not help but nod. Both Tarumi Mei and Tsunade just looked at each other and shook their heads. We better go and see, what's going on, Tsunade said. Sasuke is from Kanoha, we need to stop him ourselves, Tsunade said. I was waiting for you to say that, Kirito was the first one to act. Tsunade then accompanied by both Kakashi and Kirito went after Reikage. On the Reikage side, the situation was not looking that good. Only Sasuke alone was hard to handle. The problem is that currently, Sasuke has the Eternal Mangekyo Sharingan and also the Hashirama cell. Not only he can now use the wood style but also has considerably his chakra consumption was even better than before. EMS are cheats in Naruto. Kishimoto flavors Uchiha too much. The chakra exhaustion he faced last time when he faced Naruto wasn't a problem for him right now. Surely this change came after Sasuke, replaced his eyes with Itachi's Mangekyo Sharingan. Now he has the eternal Mangekyo Sharingan in his arsenal. Reikage took their watching the black fire on his arm. After fighting with Sasuke a little bit, he at least knew that the black fire was dangerous. But his anger made him almost go mad and attack Sasuke in a blind rage. With that said, this was very similar to what happened in the anime. Sasuke, who was fighting with the Reikage, also noticed Kirito coming and stopped. Out of all the people there, if there is one person who he wants to beat, then it's Kirito. He always has been inferior to Kirito. In fact even Naruto beat him last time and he can't take it anymore. Not even once, he has beaten Kirito and now, with this power in his hand. He wanted to beat him finally. Abito on the side, notices this and does not stop Sasuke. If anything, he wanted to fight Kirito himself. But Kirito himself was not looking at them. Out of all the people there, Kirito was only looking at the person standing beside Abito. This person was none other than Orochimaru. Kirito narrowed his eyes. Now that Kabuto is gone, the only two people who can do the Edo Tensei technique are Kirito and Orochimaru. There is no doubt that Akatsuki from this point will have their undead army. Sasuke was the first one to attack. Turning his Susanoo he directly attacks Kirito. Kirito had to stop staring at the person, standing beside Abito and block the attack. Activating his Haki, he punches out. Stopping the Susanoo's attack midway. How many times do I have to beat you up until you quit challenging me, Kirito asked with a disdained face. This time he was serious. He knew that Sasuke had killed Shinobi of Kanoha and now he no longer cared about him. The only reason he was not killing him before was to maintain at least an option to seal Kagaya if it comes to it but now considering that there is no way to bring him to his side, anyway. He better take care of him right here and right now. Quit wasting time and fight me, Namikaze, Sasuke roared. Quit wasting time and fight me, Namikaze, Sasuke roared. Why, you guys are doing enough damage by yourself. By all means, please go on. It's pretty interesting, watching people duking out and getting there but kicked. Kirito said and almost everyone around him looked at him like he was an alien. Oh god, Tsunade mutters, like something she doesn't even want others to know that Kirito is from Kanoha. That's mean, he could not help but mutter. Well, Sasuke was not that much interested in joking. He attacks Kirito anyway. Sasuke rushed towards Kirito like there was no one else there. Kirito waited. But internally he already had open observation hockey. Calculating all of Sasuke's moves. Amida. Sasuke was saying but Kirito vanished from his place. Don't play around, I know what you are thinking. Kirito appeared behind Abito, 
who also had his Rinnegan open and was about to cast Almighty Push. He got the Rinnegan from Pain of course. Kirito saw thanks to his observation hockey, he saw Abito was thinking about using his own attack after Kirito dodged Sasuke's Amterasu. Kirito did not play around this time around though. There is never playing around with Abito, kill him. He always wanted to kill his F asterisk Kerr. So, taking out his sword, he immediately cut off his neck. Only to find that the person in front of him was a clone. TCH, it's never easy, Kirito internally cursed. If you want to fight then come on, don't sneak attack from the side you bastard, Kirito shouted. Kakashi at this time appeared and stood in front of Kirito. You go, I will handle the masked man, Kakashi said, almost growling. For those who don't remember, the masked man, aka Abito, took Kakshi's Sharingan in the pain attack. Kirito isn't sure why his lazy sensei, who is lazier than him, is suddenly showing fighting spirit but he doesn't care. Yeah, you do that Kakashi sensei. Show that son of AB asterisk TCH, who is the F asterisk king copy ninja of the leave really is, Kirito said and let Kakashi handle Abito. Then he looked toward Sasuke was still getting tangled by the rakage. Susanoo Sasuke shouted and a massive Susanoo appeared out of nowhere. It was still the half version and not the entire Susanoo but still, it was strong. By the looks alone Kirito could tell that this Susanoo is much stronger. Does Eternal Mangekyo make the Susanoo stronger, besides making the user capable of using its full version? Kirito could not help but ask. He was just about to attack but suddenly Tsunade made the move. She jumps with extreme speed. Sometimes Kirito even wonders how it is possible with her assets. And then a punch was swung at the Susanoo. Boom. The entire Susanoo was thrown five meters back. Reader San, please tell me, why the F asterisk CK I keep getting on this violent woman's bad side. They will steal my spotlight, like this, Kirito said in amusement. So with a grim he also took action. Wind style Rasen Shuriken, Kirito muttered and a wildly spinning ball of wind and chakra was thrown towards the Susanoo. Kirito also appears right in front of Tsunade. Took her hand like a gentleman and vanished with her. Just before his attack makes a Chinese noodle out of the Susanoo. So you are finally planning to move, Tsunade asked, glancing at the big ball of wind in front of him. Nah, just thought that I can't let an old woman like you show up to me, you know, Kirito said. This followed a serious series punch towards him by Tsunade, but Kirito turned out to be a clone. The real Kirito was on the other side of the clone. He knew that Sasuke had survived the attack and came out. I really want to kick his ass but I want at least Abito to explain why they are here. If not anything, this will kickstart the Shinobi War and other villages will be alert. So he didn't attack Sasuke. On the other side, he also noticed that both Kakashi and Abito stopped their attack. Why are you here, Kirito asked. If no one is asking then, he has to be the one who sets the ball rolling. He asked this question to Abito. Not even giving a second look to Sasuke. But that doesn't mean that he not paying him any attention. And by the action of Abito, who quickly took the center stage to talk, Kirito knew that he too wanted to declare war. Akatsuki wants only one thing, world peace, he said. Kirito just rolled his eyes. Please, come to the point or we can start fighting again, Kirito said. And by the looks of rakage, he was looking forward to it. Abito too, sensed the situation might go out of hand any time and decided to cut his nonsense short and deliver his message. Honestly, he was not afraid of the Kages or the village but he had the confidence to fight with them because he had the biju in his hands. Right now though, he has not brought those biju. Give us the last three biju. We never wanted a war but we will if anyone stands in our way, Abito said. I am sure that his dialogues in the anime were better. Maybe this guy is under performance pressure. It's not like he has his cheat anymore right? Kirito could not but wonder. I saw her gulping and a smirk came to my face. Guess I need to satisfy her to the degree that even if she hates me after this sex. She has to come back for this dick. I thought and smirked. Then I smelt a soft and warm sensation around my dick. Ino tentatively kisses the tip of my dick with her soft lips. The rush inside was getting stronger. For a virgin, I found my urges were telling me to just bang her, 
railed her up but I suppressed those urges, and I decided to let Eno set the pace here. Blur, blur, soon the lewd sounds of Eno swallowing my dick entire and then moving her head started to echo in the room. I was getting at my edge with every stroke she did and every time he took my entire cock inside her mouth. Eno I'm at the limit, I uttered in frustration. I didn't know how many times I could come, never masturbated as that could damage the body from fully developing. Not something I can have while being a ninja. So I took charge finally, turning around I pin Eno down in the bed while showing my giant cock just in the entrance of my virgin pussy. It was wet, there was no need to check, I could see her love juices coming out already. Give me, Eno said with a rush in her voice. She was similar to me, couldn't take it anymore. Give you what, I got a lot to give, I said with a smirk. I too wanted it but the satisfaction of her asking for it was insane. You inside me, I want your dick inside me, Eno said while rubbing her pussy slowly on my cock, trying to feel even a little bit of fraction in her nether region. This movement was putting both of her on edge. I handle my dick and started rubbing my dick on her clitoris. I was not only doing this because I wanted her to ask for it but because I was very near coming myself. Need a little time off otherwise, I will come prematurely. No sir not gonna happen, this is nothing but another form of battle and Kirito Namikaze will conquer the sexy goddess in front of her today or die trying, Kirito resolved himself and stopped his rubbing. Rule 1 of lasting long in bed, make your woman come even before you start fucking her. The perceived time that you spend in bed with her will increase but at the same time, they will just chuck this into you being good in sex while you save your stamina and semen for the fight which will come after she is a little exhausted after the first climax. With that philosophy in mind, Kirito lowered her head and kissed Eno's lower lips. Tasting the love juices she was releasing. And also making sure, not to let go of her clitoris even for one. He gently rubs the beautiful nub with his thump while licking and sucking on her pussy. Aha hm Eno's moans were getting louder, signaling that she was about to come. I increased my speed then, and my tongue started to venture further inside her tight yet wet pussy the speed of my rubbing her clitoris increased, Kirito Kuen, Eno said as she was really on the verge of coming. You want to come, then ask for it, I said with a devilish look on my face. It was apparent that she was struggling to say anything and just nodded. Say it, Eno. Say that you want me, Kirito said. Yes yes, I want you, now please don't slow down, she was by now practically begging me and grinding herself on my hand which I still used to rub her to get some sense to release. I smiled and got ready. This time increasing the intensity, I used two fingers to enter her while personally going up and bidding down on her boobs, a a a a a a a a a a a a a a give us the last three biju. We never wanted a war but we will if anyone stands in our way, Abito said. I am sure that his dialogues in the anime were better. Maybe this guy is under performance pressure. It's not like he has his cheat anymore right? Kirito couldn't help but but wonder. That's all you have to say. Kirito asked, feeling disappointed at the lackluster performance of Abito. Ah yes, Abito said in confusion, he inevitably felt that he was being looked down upon but couldn't understand the reason. Why the Akatsuki is doing this? Tsunade was the first one to speak and ended the awkward silence. For world peace of course. Unlike what many of you think. We are not some sort of terrorist. We in Akatsuki seek world peace. The kind of peace that everyone had at least dreamed about in their life once. The kind of peace which I dreamed about back then. And this dream is only possible with my eye of the moon plan called Infinite Tsukiyomi. Abito slowly but steadily started to explain the cause of the Akatsuki and everyone listened, Kirito on the side finally felt that it was coming together. So why do you need the power of the chakra breast? Ahem I mean beasts to achieve this peace of yours. Don't tell me that your peace is about crushing anyone who opposes you. How are no different than some terrorists, Kirito was the one to say this and everyone else nodded at this. Rakage on the side thought that he had enough, lightning suddenly appeared around him and he became a blur, instantly appearing next to Abito, ready to punch him. The speed was commendable, as Kirito himself too didn't have this firm grasp on lightning chakra transformation. But all for none, as Abito stood there with the dominant look, and the moment Rakage was close to him, he initiated his technique. People in Kanoha were aware that the masked man was Uchiha Madara and he used the time-space ninjutsu. No one can touch him, as all the attacks will just phase through him, 
but Kirito had long taken his Mangekyo. Even if he wanted, he couldn't use Kamui. But Kirito knew better, he had seen Abito's eyes, those there were normal eyes, he should have no eyes if logic had anything to say, unfortunately, Abito now didn't even need the Sharingan as he had something better. Suddenly powerful Rinnegan eyes exerted their power and rakage was sent flying backwards. Will there be a five second cooldown time here? Kirito wanted to know, if he could attack Abito now but that would stop him from declaring the fourth great shinobi war here. The reason he was not directly taking care of Abito and the rest of the Akatsuki here was simple, Madara. I mean the real Madara freaking Uchiha, there is the possibility that he has already come to live and if that is true then it's much better to let the story develop the way it should and let the villages build a resistance to what was about to come. Why does Kirito think that Madara has already come back, because Orochimaru, him joining the Akatsuki is the biggest problem out there. Now that I think about it, I shouldn't even focus on Abito in the first place, Kirito pondered and robotically turned his head towards Uncle Snake who was looking around with amusement but then suddenly had a feeling of dread coming to him. He is the root, skill the snake and others will not be a problem, Kirito's mind like an AI at this time was generating all the positive results behind Uncle Oroki's death. But then suddenly he stopped, he wanted to just kill that problem and be done with it but considering who this person was, he shook his head. It's easier to kill an Atsutsuki than Uncle Snake. Orochimaru on the side felt that he just avoided an arrow by hair's length. Ten tails, Jubi, Kirito came out of his thinking and noticed that Abito was almost done explaining his Moon Eye plan and revealing the real intent behind capturing all the Biju. He wanted to revive the Jubi. The exclamation came from everyone while Kirito just rolled his eyes. It was shocking for me too but let be honest, even a kid who can count, would suspect at least once that if there are tail beasts from 1 to 9 then there is a possibility that there will be 10 tail as well, Kirito mutters under his breath. Hand over the biju and we will have every lasting peace, Abito sounded malicious. And what if we don't, Kirito said, from the sideline, although when Kages are there, normal shinobi are not supposed to talk the answer was supposed to be the same no matter which Kage were to answer so no one says anything about it. Then we don't have any other way, I Madara will. Declare war on all five shinobi nations, Abito said with the last words in a loud voice. And there go, the climax, Kirito unconsciously muttered to himself. Declare war on the five nations. That started it all, after saying the last piece, Abito with all of the Akatsuki was gone, leaving behind a tense situation in angry Kages. Silence was in the room while Kirito was forming a plan in his mind. He can't remember everything about the war, there were so many fillers in the later stages of the anime that he can't even remember whether he skipped any of the important main canon episodes. Knowing that canon knowledge can only take him so far, Kirito decides to take a break from following the canon this focuses entirely on war preparation. While he was thinking about this, his eyes wide open like saucers, oh h shit. He just saw Orochimaru siding with the Akatsuki, this was a problem considering that right now beside him only Orochimaru knew how to bring back the previous Hokage from death. Alarms were going on inside his head when he remembered this small bit of information, if Orochimaru contacted the death god first then it will be fucking hard to stop the Akatsuki. Madara Uchiha and Hashirama Senju on the one side, working against the Shinobi Alliance, not to mention they won't die or run out of chakra, chills ran across Kirito. No, I need to contact the death god before Orochimaru summons the previous Hokages, Kirito was so hurried after realizing his situation that he was thinking of directly teleporting himself to a place where he could summon the death god, it was high time to show his cards which he was preparing all this time anyways. But before that happened he heard the commotion about the upcoming war broke out among the Kages. The meeting resumed and all five of them started to discuss in coordination, about all the villages working together and defending off the Akatsuki. Considering that this was Madara Uchiha they were against, all of them put here differences aside and agreed, it was funny how even the younger generation readily accepted the horrors of Madara Uchiha despite never meeting him on the battlefields himself. The only two people who ever met the boogeyman of the shinobi world were Chiyo and Anoki. They truly knew the real horrors of both Madara Uchiha and Hashirama Senju. Everyone else only feared this name because of what he learned in history and against which man Uchiha Madara was usually compared. Hashirama Senju the god of the shinobi world, was a prominent figure and no one throughout the elemental nation can deny that he represented the peak of the shinobi era. There was no one close to him, no one stronger than him, 
no one except one man, Madara. So they do understand the situation they are in, but still fight off to solidify their situation on the battlefield. Kirito just tunes out the noise and lets them decide who is gonna be the commander and who will play the pawn. He silently made a clone and the clone vanished from its place with the Hiratian technique. Being the Hokage guard, he can't leave right now and thus sends the clone to handle the preparation phase. It took another hour for the talks to end, making sure that all the Kages were in agreement, the formation of the Unified Shinobi Alliance was formed in this world for the first time. After the talks, when Tsunade was ready to get back to the village, Kirito finally spoke. I need some time off, Kirito said with a serious look. Tsunade after hearing this immediately wanted to smack Kirito's head, considering that they were now on the verge of the biggest war this era was about to undergo and this kid wanted a break but didn't follow through with her thought after seeing Kirito serious, I dare you to say, no, to me bitch, face. She didn't deny it directly and asked the reason. Well let's say, I was kinda expecting something like this to happen after knowing about Akatsuki for a long time and thus I have my own preparation. Now just need to bring that help when the time is right, Kirito said with a straight face. Tsunade was glaring daggers at him but he hardly cared, finding no fault in him and he was definitely not backing down, one of the quirks of his character, stubborn as hell, Kirito is more like his brother than he or others even realized. Both brothers are very willful, Tsunade finally sighed. Fine, but I want you back as soon as possible, I want you to go and train Naruto and stay with him. I don't want you or Naruto to be part of this war, now it was Tsunade who was in a serious phase and talked with all the authority of Akage. After all, maybe others only consider Naruto a Jinchuriki after his breaking out with Nine Tails Chakra before but Tsunade knew better. She knew that Kirito also held half of the Nine Tails. So you want me and my brother to hide away while people who we both care about fight for their lives and shed their blood? Let me ask you, what part of Uzumaki's temper and Namike's determination you don't understand, Kirito asked in a nonchalant manner but his attitude about this was apparent. It's an order Kirito, Tsunade was not backing down on this. Sorry, but those who had the qualifications of a king, do not follow orders. After all. Kirito said this much and paused a little before slightly looking back at Tsunade with a little hint of red in his eyes, that red was giving shivers to everyone near him. There comes a time when a man must stand and fight. And that is when his friends, his family and everything he ever cared about could be taken away from him, Kirito said and vanished from his place. Ah, uh, ah, uh, Cree. Kirit Kayan, sounds of moans and sultry noises filled the room as Kirito started banging the sexy girl in front of him. Finally, he was no longer a virgin, his seven-inch long dick slipped inside Eno's love hole without much resistance, expressing just how much wet Eno was, but this didn't mean it was loose, oh no. It was tight and Kirito was feeling the heat and pressure while he was inside Eno. It was like his dick will melt off if he stayed there, the comfort inside her felt heavenly to him. And that was when Kirito started to move, making cute moans at the sultry girl in front of him, every time he moved he felt that he was on the verge of losing his control and just ravishing her but he didn't give his mind to the pressure that much, he makes sure that he was gentle to her, while being rough outside is fine but when really penetrating her, he was as gentle as he could be. With every thrust, Eno was twisting her body, looking like a mermaid out of the water, but even unconscious to her, she was slowly getting closer to Kirito to take him inside her even more. More, more. Ino whispered to her but Kirito heard him all right. Ding special rewards, Minato Namike's bedroom experience, skill Hokage in the bed awarded, huh, Kirito almost sounded confused but then memories of his father all technique and knowledge about fucking her mother assaulted him. He was not sure what to think in his situation anymore, let alone that he now had the memories of Kushina getting fucked from the viewpoint of his father, and as Kirito saw from Minato's own eyes, it almost looked like he was the one doing it. This was the last straw which was holding him back, fuck it. His body started to move on its own, replicating the perfectly honed movement of Minato who was very skilled at sex. Minato Namikaze never did anything half-hearted and his skill in the bedroom was no exception. Battlefield or bedroom, I will not lose, Kirito thought and beside him, the face of Minato somehow was shown. He grabbed Eno from her hips and unlike his usual gentle passe, rammed his dick inside with much force. Ah, this sudden change in movement completely caught Eno off guard. But Kirito didn't care, he gave his all and reached as deep as possible inside Eno. Call me Hokage-sama, Kirito muttered and then questioned himself. 
Is this the role play they used to play? Kirito shuddered a little but then immediately came back to his role. What, Ino was not even in the right mindset to talk back. The sudden burst of pressure mixed with a little pain almost caught her off guard. But Kirito didn't repeat, he leaned down and bit on her nipple with little force, aha, a very cute moan rang inside her room, this moan was not the subtle quiet moan she had been making till now. It was loud and she couldn't control it at all. Making her face completely red as she acted like that. She was about to cover her face with her hands to hide her shyness but Kirito grabbed them and pinned them down. He slows down his dick movement and reduce his movement range. Just barely moving but the pressure was aimed at her clitoris. It was like he was barely tickling down there at her most sensitive part. Ino shuddered, not sure whether it was because dominating look Kirito had on his usually calm and innocent face and the lustful eyes he was watching her, like he was a tool or her servant, or it was the particular action he was doing down there. Gulped, Ino couldn't help but shudder as Kirito said again, Call me Hokage-sama if you want this, Kirito said and suddenly jerked completely inside Ino with sudden movement. But that was not all, using Minato's knowledge, he added a very light to almost no lightning element on his dick making it buzz only slightly like a certain sex toy from his previous life. Dino was not ready for this, one thrust was enough to destroy her all defenses and almost made her come. But Kirito didn't let her. He immediately stopped the lightning element and completely stopped his movement of fucking her. Ino was shuddering and rubbing herself against Kirito's dick by slowly moving her hips while her hands were still pinned down by Kirito. No, no, why? Why are you stopping? Ino asked like a kicked puppy. Desperately looking for relief as she was very close to climax. Kirito had a smile on his face and asked. If you want it then call me Hokage-sama and tell me that you are mine, you are mine and mine alone. You are my slut, those lines were not in Minato's memories but he added it as he was having fun playing with Ino. Kirito after giving a badass response, which he will later realize after coming out of his chinibio phase, that it was embarrassing as hell, finally came to the cave, and he sent his clone earlier. He saw the dark cave was already filled with many seals and a lot of living sacrifices were readied for ritual. He took his place, unlike in the canon he didn't need the Shinigami mask, Thanks to his cheats he could just summon the Shinigami with just a little blood lost and expending one year of his life, nothing when it's compared to the entire motherfucking war in front of him. Clone had already bought all the sacrifices and even made them ready to be killed. Kirito took a deep breath and started the hand signs, and with a kunai cut open his palm, much more blood was required for this than a normal summon contract. Shinigami summon, Kirito said and slammed his plan on the ground, letting the seal be soaked by his blood. There was no puff of smoke this time around but rather the place was covered with a pitch black shadow, like someone spilt ink in the entire room. Kirito waited and soon a horrifying image of the Shinigami started to appear in front of him. I hope that system didn't screw up with me here. I don't want to die in such a lame way, Kirito joked to himself in nervousness. The Shinigami didn't say anything but this feeling were transferred to Kirito. He wanted to know why Kirito summoned him here and what he wanted. Kirito went on explaining the entire details about bringing back the souls of the dead Hokage but the more Kirito spoke the more unhappy Shinigami became. But thankfully he didn't deny the request, apparently, the system really did give some control and command to Kirito over the Shinigami. In a realm where the boundaries between life and death were as thin as a wisp of smoke, a forbidden jutsu known as Edo Tensei lingered, waiting to be unleashed. Thank God that Kirito didn't have to cut open his own stomach like Orochimaru did in the anime. The atmosphere crackled with malevolent energy as Kirito performed the intricate hand signs, invoking the ancient and ominous Edo Tensei. The ethereal realm trembled as the Shinigami fulfilled its end of the bargain, releasing the souls of the deceased Hokage from the cold embrace of the afterlife. But of course only in exchange for the sacrifice Kirito prepared for him. The first to emerge was Hashirama Senju, the god of Shinobi, his majestic presence casting an awe-inspiring aura. Following him were the stoic Tobarama Senju, and the fiery Hiruzen Sarutobi, although Kirito really didn't want to summon this old monkey they needed as much fighting power as possible, and the man he wanted to meet the most Minato Namikaze, his father and the source of all the power system given to him. As the Edo Tensei's jutsu bound their souls to the mortal plane, the once lifeless bodies of the Hokage now moved with unnatural vigor. Kirito started making hand signs after Shinigami was gone, he never really wanted to control the past Hokage really, 
that would make him unable to fight himself in the main battle, as he needed to control them all the time, he just wanted to bring them back and give them their conscience to let them fight on their own, it's just that Kirito has the power to control them whenever he wanted and that's it. He relatively sighed in relief as all the souls of the past Okage came in and he was not late. If it was Orochimaru who did this first then his side would have suffered a lot. He then slowly started another set of hand side to finally let the other set of sacrifices he prepared to bring the Hokages to life. Soon the life of the captive started to die down and the light in the eyes of the past Hokage came to life. And then suddenly, all of them blink like suddenly they all woke up from a long dreamlike state, looking around and looking at their own bodies. Hashirama Senju, the first Hokage, blinked in astonishment as he found himself standing once again on the soil of the living realm. His eyes widened, and for a moment, the god of shinobi was rendered speechless. Toborama Senju, the second Hokage, surveyed his surroundings with a mixture of confusion and curiosity. He arched an eyebrow, processing the reality of his unexpected return. Somewhere he realized what just happened, after all, he is not the creator for nothing, this was his own technique after all. Hiruzen Sarutobi, the third Hokage, furrowed his brow in disbelief, his wise eyes darting around as if trying to comprehend the impossible. A hushed murmur of, what is this, escaped his lips. Kirito on the side just wanted to order him to shut up but let it slide, he didn't want to make a first bad impression on the past Hokages. Minato Namikaze, the fourth Hokage, blinked rapidly, his sharp senses catching up with the sudden change. The yellow flash couldn't hide the surprise etched across his face. But he was more surprised by the man in front of him, not a man, he was still young maybe sixteen at best, but the real thing which stunned him was the face of the man. He saw his own face like he was there standing when he was only fifteen or sixteen years old. Kirito watched in awe as all the past Okage slowly got their consciousness back and started talking, but he didn't dwell his time on others much, as he was more focused on a man who looked exactly like him. This man was none other than his father, Minato Namikaze. Minato you are here too. Sarutobi Hiruzen looked surprised and looked towards his successor and even his predecessors. Saru, you are old. What's going on, are you not the Hokage anymore? When did you die? Tobarama said while Hashirama was looking at the two similar looking men on the side. Who are you, Hashirama, acting just like how he did in the anime, first asked Minato about his identity, after all, he was dead and considering that only the past Hokages were there, Hashirama couldn't help but ask. Oh I am the fourth Hokage sir, Minato immediately shifted his eye contact with Kirito, there were unknown emotions in his eyes but he didn't say anything and responded to Hashirama's question. Fourth Hokage huh, good good, how is the village, the first Hokage asked but Tobarama interrupted him in and asked. You also died, so who is the current Hokage now? Tobarama was now more worried about the village. He looked back at the similar-looking young man to the fourth Hokage and directed the question towards him. Kirito didn't say much, I will explain everything soon, Kirito said with a normal smile, there was no feeling or intention in that smile, but Minato knew that smile well. He used to give that same smile when shit was about to hit the fan. Well, this is an unusual reunion. Last time I checked, I was fighting the Nine Tails, Minato said, trying to keep the conversation rolling. Tobarama frowned not getting the answers soon but he decided to wait, considering that Kirito hadn't outright controlled them, and even given them full control of their bodies back, he didn't consider Kirito an enemy at least not yet. Maybe the first thing we should ask is how come the fourth and man with one hand here looked so alike, Hashirama asked. Hiruzen on the side signed, he knew what was going on, at least who was standing in front of him. Kirito, what happened to the village after Orochimaru attacked us, why did you summon bring us back, Hiruzen asked trying to use his old I am Hokage, listen to me, card again. Kanoha handled the situation but we are in much more trouble now. Need help to fight the upcoming war. Kirito didn't dwell on the question much and answered in bullet point format. On the side though, Minato's eyebrows rose, he was trying to figure out which child of his was in front of him, Naruto or Kirito. Now that was clear, not like he couldn't tell after not seeing those whisker-like birthmarks on his face anymore. Hashirama, the first Hokage, looked at Kirito with a raised eyebrow. The world war brought all the bad memories back like a tide, so, young man, care to explain why you brought us back from the afterlife? I was in the middle of a shogi game with the Mido, Hashirama said, and this instantly eased the tension around the room, 
Kirito now was honestly wondering whether souls can really meet in the afterlife. In the anime we did see that happening but this world was different and many things which happened in the anime didn't happen here. Kirito decided to talk with his father later and started telling them the entirety of the situation that all the hidden villages and the entire shinobi world were facing. How the biggest war they have ever faced, is coming towards them. After the impromptu lecture about the current times, there was silence in the room, Kirito explained how Madara was here to start war and activate his Moon Eye plan. He explained about the Ten Tails and even the Sage of Six Path, his mother and brother. The Atsutsuki clan and the curse and bond between the sons of Hagoromo, and the only response from the past Okages after hearing this long-ass lecture from Kirito was. How do you know all this? Kirito sighed, I thought about it, there might be no one else but if it comes to his own father then maybe he doesn't mind explaining his origins. Who he really is. Kirito looked at Minato, mind coming out with me, we need to talk, Kirito asked and Minato just smiled, it was a pleasant smile and a content smile which expressed all of his happiness after seeing his son again. Sure, Minato responded, and seeing that there was definitely a connection between them, other Hokage let Minato accompany Kirito while making Hiruzen explain to them the dynamics of the duo as he was the only one besides those two who knew anything. Years ago on that fateful day, the village of Kanoha was under siege as the Nine Tails, the mighty Kyubi, rampaged through the streets, leaving destruction in its wake. Minato Namikaze, the fourth Hokage, stood resolute, facing the colossal beast with a determination etched across his face. The air crackled with tension as Minato expertly weaved through the beast's attacks, his flying thunder god technique allowing him to teleport with unparalleled speed. He knew that the safety of the village and his newborn sons depended on his actions. But there was much more happening than just the Nine Tails attack, Kushina had just given birth to two boys, and Minato didn't even know that he had two boys as he left his wife's side to fight Nine Tails. As Minato fought bravely to contain the Kyubi, Kushina successfully gave birth to not one but two sons, Naruto and Kirito. Their cries echoed through the hospital room, signifying the beginning of a new era, even in the face of imminent danger. It was strange how both she and her husband banter quite a lot of time deciding the names, with Chakra, finding the gender of the child was not hard but in the case of twins, it was hard to tell the gender. Thus, both of them started finding four names overall for their children, two names for boys and two names for girls if they were girls. Asuna and Kana were both Mianto's and Kushina's picks. Minato just came up with a name while Kushina used the name of a very important friend of hers from the past. But if they were boys, then Kushina wanted to name her son Kirito. After the name of a person who saved her when Yuzu got destroyed. She can't remember much but she does know that a blonde man saved her, he said his name was Kirito. Minato on the other hand already had a great name for a boy, Naruto a name he got from his sensei's book. With the village on the brink of destruction, Minato knew that desperate measures were required. As he continued his intense battle with the Nine Tails, a plan formed in his mind. He teleported back to where Kushina held their newborn sons and made a difficult decision. Minato, what's going on? Kushina asked knowing fully well that that masked man took out the nine tails from inside her and that left her completely exhausted and empty. Kushina, despite her weakened state, holds one of her babies in her hand, tentatively stroking the whiskers like marks on the baby's face, while Minato takes hold of the other infant. They are beautiful, just like you, Minato said, but Kushina rolled her eyes at the statement, both the boys were practically a copy of Minato. His name is Naruto, like you want it to be, Kushina looked lovingly at the baby boy in her hands and said with much difficulty, Minato already knew Kushina's fate, there was pain on his face but he still smiled, because what he was about to do, didn't make his fate any better. Not to mention this might be the last time he could see his children. Uzumaki, let called him Naruto Uzumaki. I chose the name so it's fair that he take your title, Minato said fully knowing that he didn't have much time but he wanted to cherish every second of this last warmth he was feeling in his heart. And him, Minato said, looking at the baby he was holding in his hands, looking even more like him and Naruto. Trying to open his eyes, already moving his small arms and making small noises. He was not sure but he could sense something more from the other son, something much more mature. Kirito, his name will be Namikaze Kirito, Minato said almost stunned when the boy looked at him with bright blue eyes just like his, something was telling him that there was intelligence in those eyes. That look was not like a child. Minato template initialization started. 
Minato's eyes widen, and his whole body suddenly jolts and freezes. A genjutsu. Was Minato's first response but there was no change in his chakra. Blood matched, Clan D genetic structure reformation from Uzumaki and Namike's bloodline, Minato didn't understand what was going on, the language was new to him. Then something strange happened, Minato saw the ocean, war, shinobi, ships, pirates, giants, the red moon, and him. Him. Him with one hand missing. No, not him. Present Minato still remembers that night, when he looked at his son who was looking at the distant horizon, his son just ended up telling him that he was from another world, and everything here is a manga. Not real. He is not sure how to react to his anymore. He hasn't said anything yet, Kirito didn't let him, he went ahead and talked first. Mianto looked at his son's broken arm and frowned. He closed his eyes and thought about times when he was all alone, longing for a family. There were no words in his mind which could explain his pain, so he didn't say anything he just walked up to his son and sat beside him, and both of them stayed there until the other person said anything. Kirito found himself standing alone with his resurrected father. The air was thick with emotion as father and son faced each other for the first time. Kirito before even talking to Minato, explains the situation the entire shinobi war was in and also his own identity as an otherworldly traveler. Son, Minato, after both of them were quiet for some time finally said, the word was foreign to Kirito now, he had parents in his previous life but not for long, and here too, he just grew up all alone. Kirito couldn't contain the emotions welling up inside him. He hesitated for a moment before rushing into Minato's arms. The warmth of the embrace was both comforting and surreal. Fuck if the reader calls him gay, he just really wanted to, he can act all sigma all day around but everyone needs emotional support, it's strange how Kirito never met his father in person before but after seeing him just once knew that he was weak in front of him and he won't judge. Not like he was acting weak, longing for parents is not weak, it is humane, longing for someone you can call your own is a privilege that only a few have in this godforsaken world. Naruto is always there but he can't be like this in front of Naruto, Kirito always acts like Naruto's emotional pillar and support, like a strong and reliable brother. Only in front of Mianto, that he can just let go and relax. He doesn't want anyone to carry his burden but having someone who he can tell his life to is always a nice thing. I never got a message from you or mom like you left one of Naruto, give, Kirito release Minato already feeling shy about acting on his impulses and changed the conversation immediately. Minato was taken aback a little but then smiled affectionately. We didn't have many chakras left to leave a chakra and print on you, I am even surprised that you know about it, Minato said, looking at his son, he could feel the power his body had, Akage's intuition can't go wrong, his son was strong, even strong than him, Minato was sure of it. By the way, how did you bring me back to life, I was in the Shinigami's belly, Minato asked, couldn't comprehend what his son just did, it's almost impossible to take out a soul from that devil's stomach. Well, I couldn't let Naruto have all the fun of having his parents around, could I? Kirito winked. Minato's eyes twinkled with amusement. His son not only looked like him but also had a little bit of his own personality. I guess not. But seriously, I'm proud of the man you've become. We have been watching over you, you know. Minato said but Kirito was surprised, how did he watch over me? but then he thought about what word Minato used, we maybe he was talking about Kushina, she was free and could spy on the land of the living. I always felt like there was someone looking out for me, Kirito said but he wasn't talking about Kushina or Minato, he thought about his system and remembered what the system is called, Minato template, from. Kirito nodded, a sense of closure washing over him. I know, dad. And now, we have a chance to make up for lost time. And soon we can even get back to the village and meet Naruto, Kirito felt a little guilty as Naruto was not here, and he was hoarding all of Minato's time. The father and son spent some quiet moments together, sharing stories and catching up on the years they had missed. Minato listened with pride as Kirito recounted his adventures and accomplishments, and Kirito hung on every word as Minato shared tales from his own past. In that moment, time seemed to stand still as the bond between father and son strengthened. Other Hokage were still taking themselves outside, Sarutobi also took his time explaining what happened after the deaths of the first and second Hokage. Kirito left a clone there to explain the current problem to them in detail and why he bought them back. Alright then, Hokages of the past, what you guys say, wanna see the leaf which you left all that time ago, 
I grim as all the four Hokage got ready to get a back to the village. It was finally time to start the war. Kanahagakur no Sato the village was buzzing with people, many civilians were doing their everyday work while ninjas were preparing for the upcoming war. Everyone at this time in the village was on high alert as well, the last Akatsuki attack was still in the minds of many. Suddenly a little outside of the village five people appeared out of nowhere, it was Kirito and the dead Hokage. Kirito at first thought that he had to teleport all the Hokage here but then realized that his father and Tobarama knew Hiration. Ah, this is looking pretty different than how I remember it, Hashirama was the first one to open his mouth, and even Tobarama was the same, village under Hiruzen Saratobi went into many chances than both of them remembered, in fact, Hiruzen Saratobi was the only Hokage who lived that long. This brings back memories, Minato couldn't help but say. Come on, we better directly go to the Hokage office, I don't think others watching us in the village is such a good idea, Kirito said and others also nodded, it would be troublesome if the villages and shinobi suddenly saw all the dead Hokage standing together, coming back to live. Hokage office Tsunade was now working overtime with Shizun. Tsunade grew after seeing Shizun bringing more paperwork for her, the heartless woman would not even let her drink or gamble after the war was announced. She understands that it's not the luxury that she can afford right now but still. Jeez. She sighed and looked outside of the village, the entire village was on high alert, and many of the shinobi who went outside to perform the mission after the pain attack to boost the economic situation of the village were called back. Finally, the calm of almost twenty years in the shinobi world was about to break as another war was on the horizon, the only difference was that this time, it was not shinobi against shinobi anymore. This time the stakes here are much higher, this time if they lose maybe the entire human species might come to an end. She was staring at the village outside when suddenly a blur happened and in the office were standing many familiar figures. The umbu hiding in the shadows to protect their hokage immediately wanted to act but considering that Kirito usually used this method to come inside the office even after being repeatedly scolded by the hokage-sama, they didn't directly act. But when they realized just who were standing in front of them, they almost lost their footing. Tsunade and Shizun, also used to Kirito's habit of coming unannounced didn't react much but they were baffled the moment they saw two Kirito standing there with what can they only say was the dead Hokage of the past. G Grandfather, Tsunade was the first to react and her reaction was almost like Kirito's anticipated. Kirito, what's going on, Shizun came out of the daze even before Tsunade and asked in a baffled tone. Kirito just smirks. Minutes later it took some time to explain to Tsunade why Kirito ended up summoning the dead Hokage and brought them here. She didn't like Kirito playing with the dead but when she realized that there was a possibility that Orochimaru bring them back if he hasn't done it and then the Shinobi Alliance had to fight the yellow flash of the leaf, the professor, the creator and the god of the Shinobi himself alongside Madara freaking Uchiha. Kirito even heard the sound of gulping from the hidden Umbu. Well then that changes things, but you should have told me this before, Tsunade still angry reprimanded Kirito. Kirito though being a thick-skinned bastard just shrugged it off and didn't say that Hokage are not the only one he gonna bring back. He just reincarnated them early because in their cases, he or even Orochimaru might not have needed their bodies. Only DNA with the right sacrifice and a way to bring back their souls from the stomach of a devil would have sufficed. Before you start talking about business, tell me where is Naruto? He will kill me if he knows that father came back and I didn't let him know, Kirito joked but at the same time spread his senses to track him. But there was no sign of him, and by the calm but awkward face of Tsunade, he could tell that Naruto was not in the village but at least safe. Hmm, yeah about that, Tswanda started. Let me guess, you send him somewhere safe to protect him, Kirito completed the sentence before Tsunade could. Yes, Tsunade said and Kirito knew what came next, she wanted to send him there too. Yeah like that will happen. Readers are here for action, not him to play house with his brother in a training camp. Naruto should be with Killer B if things went like a cannon. Don't bother, I ain't going and no, no order can chance that. If you want to send me there then make me. Kirito said and a little hockey was already on his voice. Hashirama, Tobarama, Hiruzen and even Minato who were silent up to this point were a little stunned. They knew that Kirito was the Jinchuriki of Nine Tail and it was only natural that he was strong but this extremely suppressing feeling and pressure they felt for just a second was not like a Jinchuriki, they were the Hokage, they knew how that felt. In fact, they felt that this was not even Chakra in the first place. 
Hashirama's eyes shined, Taburma was the most interested now in Kirito and his strange ability, Minato on the other hand suddenly remembered the time when he was fighting the Nine Tail and held his son for the first time in his hand, that strange notification. Hiruzen Sarutobi on the other hand stood in the place he was standing like a statue, he had felt this power before, the man who saved Kushina all that time ago and brought her back to Kanoha. Hiruzen had had a talk with him before, that was the only second time he felt how insignificant his power was against those who were truly strong. This presence was exactly similar to him, now he also noticed that Kirito was wearing similar clothes to that man, he too had only one hand and a sword on his side. But that man was tall, maybe taller than even Jiraiya and had red hair with a scar on his face. He never told his name but Hiruzen always thought that he was a Uzumaki. Forms of sweat form on his face, he never thought that possible as he was not truly alive right now, he was an Edo Tensei. Huh, I didn't know that you were this strong, Hashirama broke the tension and said. Nah, I am still nothing in front of you, Kirito said the truth, he meant it, Hashirama Senju is strong as hell. Anyway, do you have anything besides that to talk about, Kirito asked, and Tsunade who couldn't change Kirito's mind just shook his head. She sends an angry glance at Minato to express her dissatisfaction with his son but he just laughs nervously. Then Tsunade sat across from Kirito and other Kages and started to talk about the looming threat of Madara and the Fourth Great Shinobi War. Kirito, I know this is a lot to take in, but the situation demands clarity especially all all of you joined in, Tsunade paused and looked at the Edo Tensei Hokage and then with a sigh started again. Madara is after the tail beast, if you refuse to back down then I can let you join the war, others don't know that you are also a Jinchuriki anyways. Kirito nodded, his expression serious as he absorbed the weight of the information. The alliance is strong but it lacks unity, and above everything, we are not clear what exactly we are up against this time around, Tsunade said knowing fully well that Kirito knew something and continued. We've gathered intelligence, and it seems that Madara is planning to enact the Eye of the Moon plan. This would plunge the entire world into an eternal dream, a genjutsu from which there is no escape. Tsunade said and Kirito now wondered how Tsunade knew this information, considering Abito back then never talked anything about the Moon Eye plan being a genjutsu, he got really curious but didn't ask. That sounds ominous. What's the plan? Kirito asked this instead. Tsunade leaned forward, her eyes determined. We're forming a united front with the other villages, leaf, sand, mist, stone, and cloud. Our combined forces will engage Madara and his army in almost every plane from here to their headquarters, mainly splitting the main army into small armies of four or five. However, we're not just relying on sheer strength, we have a strategy. You would have known this if you didn't leave the meeting with little to no prior notice and those cheesy lines. Tsunade sends a glare at Kirito who him being the thick skin he is, just brushes it off. On the side, Tobarama, Minato, Hashima and Hiruzen listen attentively as their knowledge is only limited to what Kirito told them and he doesn't say anything about his knowledge of the canon but just what was happening, only Minato knew about him being a reincarnation. Minato still couldn't believe reincarnation, it was very hard to believe but he believed his son not to mention, that suddenly notification when he held Kirito for the first time, was also there. He remembered seeing sea and pirate in his vision and now was wondering where Kirito was a pirate in his previous life. Tsunade unfolded a map, revealing a detailed plan of action. The main battlefield is divided into five different locations and multiple units under unit commander will be sent there. Major powers will not be deployed until Madara comes forward on his own, not to mention, now that you said that Orochimaru can summon dead back. We might need to take care of them as well. We'll coordinate attacks, using diversion tactics, to keep his forces scattered. Our intel suggests that Madara has resurrected several powerful ninjas from the past. Tsunade said, in fact, she already knew that the dead were coming back but what she didn't know was why and who was doing it, but thanks to Kirito now she knew. Against the dead, I can only consider ourselves fortunate that we have more help now, Tsunade said towards the dead Hokages. Now you all are a crucial part of our strategy. Minato, grandfather, granduncle, and sensei please fight alongside us. We've also formed special units, each led by a renowned ninja, to counter specific threats, Tsunade said. No, let the zombie army to me, I will deploy them where they are most needed, and I know what I am doing so don't worry. Also, add a sealing team, we can't kill the Edo Tensei, 
the only way to stop them is to seal them up, Kirito added and Tobarama who was about to say the same also nodded. She nodded and pointed to different locations on the map, explaining the deployment of forces and the role of each village. Communication is key. We'll use modern technology and mind jutsu to coordinate attacks and share intel instantly, not to mention, we have Yamanaka and there are very special means to observe what's happening in the battle. The villages must work as one, pooling our resources and abilities. For the first time, a war has transcended the borders of our shinobi villages. Tsunade said and sighed. For Hashirama this sounds quite close to what he always wanted to achieve while other Kages just couldn't believe that really a time would come when the five big villages would work together. After digesting all the info Kirito finally said. It's a lot to take in, but I'm ready to do whatever it takes just let me out and do my thing, I am best when I am in control of my movement. There was also the fact that someone had to stop Orochimaru, only that way can the Edo Tensei be stopped. I agree and I believe that that not only about you and thus I want you to command the war in the center, Tsunade bruised Kirito's bubble of going after Orochimaru. Shit, Kirito couldn't help but mutter under his breath. Naruto was sent to Konoha even faster than he arrived in the land of iron after the Akatsuki attack when the 5k summit happened. He didn't want to but unlike his brother, who can say a cool line before vanishing before the fist of righteous fury from their dear Hokage fell on him. Kirito is lucky in this regard, Naruto mutters to himself, if only he knew that Kirito himself needed powerful hockey sometimes to make things work out for him. What I am doing here? Naruto complained, he knew that he was here, living on the back of the giant turtle the size of an island, to control his nine-tailed chakra and master that power but still. It's strange how his brother also has the same powers as him but he was never forced to come. Well, he hardly uses nine-tails powers. Who I am trying to kid here, Kirito is much stronger than me, don't know whether he can use Nine-Tail Chakra or not but he hardly needs it, Naruto mutters to himself and suddenly remembers his brother's broken arm. There was guilt and pain inside him about that, he didn't fight alongside him, he should have, he wasted too much time on Sasuke, but he should have been there, fighting alongside Kirito. And then he remembered why he agreed to come here in the first place, it was power, it was so that he could get stronger, so that he could save his brother, his friends and everyone else. And with that, he stood up and once again entered the room to train with Eight-Tail Killer B. Apparently, just like in the anime, Killer B was not killed, in the canon he was attacked by Sasuke, and here he was attacked by Itachi. Kirito could have believed that Sasuke could make a mistake but not Itachi, most likely that Itachi let Killer B go. Unlike the canon, there was no Kisame to find out the location of the Turtle Island this time around and thus there was no attack from any Akatsuki members either, not like Abito or Madara had any spawns to spare anyway. Almost all the members of the Akatsuki were dead and even their bodies were collected by Kirito. In Akatsuki hideout two people were walking side by side, one was wearing an orange mask while the other had facial features like a snake. Both of them were wearing a black long coat with red clouds printed on them. I hope that you have everything ready by now Orochimaru. I will not say this again, stop wasting my time or I will kill you, Abito said with zero expression on his face. Kukuku you can be assured that you will not be disappointed, Orochimaru said while still walking alongside Abito. As they both entered into a clearing they both saw a lake or pound inside the cave. It was man-made and looked quite beautiful but none of them cared about it, as they looked past the lake at the foot of the giant tree. It's unbelievable, how did you manage this, Orochimaru said in his normal snaky way again. It was not easy, took an awfully large amount of chakra from the ghetto statue, Abito said and then looked at Orochimaru as if telling him to stop wasting his time and get to work. Orochimaru also understood and then started making hand signs. With a few hand signs the ground started to shake and many coffins suddenly grew from the ground. As I promised, I will increase the power of Akatsuki, Orochimaru said while all the coffins started to open up one by one. The former Jinchuriki's one tail Gara of the Sand, two tails Yujito, three tail Yagura Karatachi, four tail Rashi, five tail Han, six tail Yudakata, seven tails, for we have seven out of nine Jinchuriki here, the former members of Seven Swords Men of the Mist. Jinan Akabino Jinpachi Minashi Amuri Ringo Kushimaru Kurirer Fuguki Suekazan, shame that we couldn't get the last two. Then we also have the former Kages. 4th Kazakage Raza 3rd Reikage A 2nd Mizukage Genjetsu 2nd Suchikage Mu Again shame how I couldn't get a Hokage for my collection. 
And not only that, we have many many more renowned shinobi from all the major and minor villages. Orochimaru said with a smile but he was not done, as one more coffin appeared beside the previous hundreds of them. Abito saw the person coming out of this coffin and his face almost looked horrid. Where did you get this? Abito asked. The land of winds, are you sure about this, I am not much of a leader material you know, Kirito said looking at Kakashi who also stood beside him. Don't worry, Hokage-sama made you the commander-in-chief in the battle because she believes in you, Kakashi said but Kirito doubted it. Most likely he was given the position so that Tsunade could keep tabs on him and keep him in the main battle. Captain of the First Company Derui of Kumogakure. The Midrange Battle Division. Captain of the Second Company Mifune. The Short Range Battle Division. Captain of the Third Company Kakashi Hitaki, the Support Division. And the Captain of the Fourth Company and the Commander in Chief of the Shinobi Alliance Kirito Namikaze, the fucking frontal assault. Well, that sure is overwhelming, Kirito said as he looked at the thousands and thousands of Shinobi standing in front of Kirito. Are you nervous? Kakashi asked with still his lazy eyes looking at the magnificent view in front of him. An alliance between all shinobis. A dream came true. Nervous, no not at all. It's just nostalgic, Kirito said looking at the roaring shinobis. Nostalgia? Kakashi asked in confusion. He didn't hear what Kirito was hearing. Departure to the front line, yes this scene just brings back that from my memories. Reminds me why I like shonen so much, Kirito had a smile on his face. Kirito looked at the massive army of shinobi in front of him and took a deep breath before opening his mouth, he knew that repeating what Gara did in the anime wouldn't work, he didn't have a strong position as a kage should have not to mention, the only thing going on for him was his power which even the other kages has to agree after what he saw in the five kage summit. That was the only reason he got this position in the first place and now he had to make his worth known to his troops otherwise they would not listen to him when the times demanded. So he started with what led him to this floor in the first place. It was power. With a sudden surge of power, the atmosphere around him changed, but before completely releasing his domineering hockey, conqueror's hockey, he first shaped it, trying to content it only so that it doesn't go on a rampage not to mention he also holds back to just give the right amount of oppression and nothing more. The shinobi from all different villages stood together but there was hardly any harmony. There were small quarrels breaking out among them. It's just unrealistic for their leaders to suddenly ask them to work together after years and years of bad blood between them. No matter how heart-touching Gara's speech was, it can only reach a person who has never seen the horrors of war and has never lost a loved one. It might be enough for manga readers or anime watchers from the 21st century but not for the hard-hearted shinobis who long so much because of the other side, and also have taken much from the other side. Will you take responsibility for all the IWA shinobi killed by your village, TCH, why do we have to work with the Mist Village, they are murderers who kill their own people, what did you say punk, please stop, we need to work together, like I ever work with this cloud shinobi, many shinobi were angry and shouting even ready to fight each other but suddenly pressure appeared out of nowhere. Their eyes widened, their breathing started to get heavy and they felt like the gravity itself had increased around them. T, this, W, what is this, they mutter out with much difficulty. It was like a biju suddenly spotted them and was coming to devour them. Kirito who just released his conqueror's hockey looked around and noticed that people near him were the most affected. Even shinobi like Kakashi was stunned, this made him realize that he didn't hold back enough and thus with much difficulty, he retreated more of his hockey. For him, observation hockey is the easiest to handle as he was doing it for the longest time in the form of hyper-focus then followed by armament hockey as he thought previously something else entirely. But still, it was good, he can control. The real problem is the conqueror's hockey, not only this is the hardest hockey to master but also he doesn't have much time to train in it, if only this had been given to him by the system, he could have full control that was not the case. Sorry, Kirito slowly said to Kakashi who was the only one among all the other shinobi there, who knew about hockey. Please restrain this ability of yours on the battlefield, Kakashi said while also making sure that others heard him, and ease their already readied hands to form jutsus. Listen, everyone, Kirito shouted after adjusting his hockey once more. I know that all of you have differences but believe me this war which we are about to fight is much more than just villages, Kirito said and his hockey somehow made his voice amplified. All the shinobi looked at the person talking, and she saw a man with only one hand, wearing a black cloak standing in the middle of the four highly powerful shinobi. 
this person was none other than Kirito Namikaze, the son of Minato Namikaze the fourth Hokage. And even seeing his face was giving them the chills. Kirito seeing that the shinobi quieted down, spoke further. Make no mistake, when we later fight the enemy. This war is not to gain natural resources or to establish supremacy. Let me remind you again, if we lose, the shinobi kind is doomed, if we lose then humankind is doomed and if we don't win then the next person who dies will be our family and friends. This time the enemy will not be a fellow human, Kirito said, revealing something that he officially shouldn't know but he didn't care and told the truth anyway. Since I was born, there was one thing which I was forced to accept. That we are shinobi, and we fight to save our loved ones, we fight because we have to. Once again the situation has come to this where we have to fight. But I am glad that this time around, I will not be killing any humans, a fellow shinobi who just wants to end the fight and go back home. So here I am, asking all of you to work with me, help me, and your fellow shinobi, because for the first time in history, we have a chance to fight together, for the first time in history, there is no broken truths and lies. There is just one truth and one lie. For the first time, we stand here not by the name of a nation but as shinobi. Let all your fury this time be directed toward the one true enemy, without any guilty conscience. For this one let us stand together and fight side by side. Kirito said, honestly he wasn't even planning to give a prep talk but something after remembering the music, departure to the front line, changed inside him and thus for the first time he opened his heart and said what he truly felt. Not shabby, not shabby at all, Kakashi from the side said and showed a thumbs up. Finally, after the cheers died down, the entire army was ready to mobilize. All four companies got ready and started following their company's leader. All captains took their official place right the front of the entire company and started their march as the mighty army of shinobi followed them. The first company was led by Derui, and they were going towards the rocky plain to stop the march of the enemies from there. The idea was to not let any more powerful enemy move towards the other party. The second company was led by Mifune, which was directed towards the mountain area to again block that part. The third company was Kakashi and he was with Guy. They were moving towards the forest area to clear the road until they met company one of Derui in the coastal area. And lastly, it was Kirito who was marching with his company towards the desert area, the most important area as it's close to the base of Akatsuki. Derui led the first company of the allied shinobi forces to the rocky plains, a battleground against the impending white Zetsu onslaught. The air was thick with tension as they braced themselves for the approaching enemy. As the first rays of dawn broke, the earth trembled, and the ground cracked open, revealing a horde of white Zetsu emerging from the depths. Derui's eyes narrowed, and he raised his hand, signaling his troops to prepare for battle. First company, hold your ground. We can't let these Zetsu overrun us. Derui shouted and the white Zetsu, eerily reminiscent of twisted trees, closed in with a menacing pace. Derui, a master of the lightning release, weaved through the battlefield, leaving trails of afterimages. His black lightning danced across the rocky plain, striking down Zetsu after Zetsu. This was the first time, the shinobi were fighting something like a white Zetsu and clearly, it was not like any traditional enemy. However, the unexpected happened. From the shadows of the rocky terrain, Edo Tensei began to emerge, a fallen ninja from different eras, reanimated to fight once more. The first company faced a new challenge as the battlefield became a clash between the living and the dead. This was a twist as although they were told that Orochimaru would be using the Edo Tensei technique against them it was still hard to fight someone dear to them who they lost long ago. Derui, undeterred, faced the Edo Tensei with his signature black lightning-infused kenjutsu. He parried the strikes of legendary warriors from the past, each clash echoing through the rocky expanse. His first company, though initially taken aback, followed Derui's lead. They fought valiantly against the Edo Tensei, their resolve unwavering. Derui's strategic brilliance shone as he coordinated his forces to counter the unrelenting waves of adversaries. Although quite more in numbers White Zetsu did not have as skills as the battle-hardened shinobi. But while they lack in the pure power or skills, they fill that gap with their regenerative powers and the fact that they can imitate any shinobi on the battlefield. Amidst the chaos, Derui's Rantun, Storm Release, Jutsu illuminated the battlefield. Arcs of powerful lightning surged through the air, cutting through both Zetsu and Edo Tensei alike. 
the rocky plain became a spectacle of elemental clashes and intense combat. Derui's voice cut through the tumultuous battlefield, their objective was to completely cross the rocky plain and then move towards the coastal line as soon as possible. Mithyun was the leader of the samurai and a stoic and seasoned captain of the second division, led his elite company to the mountainous terrain, a critical location in the impending clash against the formidable enemy forces. The towering peaks presented a strategic advantage, and Mithyun intended to nullify it by securing the high ground for the allied shinobi forces. Although the mountain range was nowhere close to the main hideout of the enemy it was an important key position which the shinobi alliance had to defend. As the second division ascended the rugged slopes, Mithyun's piercing gaze surveyed the surroundings. The wind whispered through the mountainous crags, carrying a sense of anticipation. His company, a well-disciplined group of skilled warriors, followed his lead with unwavering determination. The rocky terrain echoed with the unsheathing of swords and the clinking of armor as Mithyun's company assumed their positions. Their eyes remained fixed on the ascent, vigilant for any signs of approaching adversaries. The enemy, well aware of the strategic significance of the mountainous region, soon emerged from the shadows. Mithyun's analytical mind quickly assessed the situation, and he signaled his company to hold its ground. Maintain formation. We won't allow them to claim this vantage point, he said with much determination. The clash began as the enemy forces attempted to scale the mountainside. Mithyun's katana flashed with precision, cutting through the opposition. His leadership inspired the second division, and they fought with a synchronized grace, repelling the enemy's advance. Mithyun's strategic brilliance unfolded as he directed his forces to exploit the natural choke points of the rocky ascent. His company utilized the terrain to their advantage, turning the mountainous battlefield into a fortress that thwarted the enemy's attempts at a coordinated assault. As the battle intensified, Mithyun's unwavering resolve and tactical acumen resonated with his soldiers. The mountain echoed with the clash of steel, the shouts of warriors, and the rhythmic footfalls of the second division holding their ground. Under the dappled sunlight filtering through the dense foliage, Kakashi Hitaki, the future sixth Hokage, led the third division into the heart of the vast forest. A seasoned tactician, Kakashi's strategic mind was complemented by the presence of his eternal rival, Might Guy, at his side. Together, they sought to utilize the intricate terrain to their advantage in the unfolding conflict. This was again a very canon-like situation where both Kakashi and Guy were sent to the same division because both knew each other well and had learned from each other before. As the division moved deeper into the forest, the air thickened with the scent of moss and the distant murmur of leaves. Kakashi's single eye darted around, assessing the natural features that could be leveraged against. The impending enemy forces. Keep your senses sharp. The forest provides cover, but remember that the enemy is more adapted to the forest than we are, Kakashi said. Guy, sporting his customary green jumpsuit, grinned with unbridled enthusiasm. Fear not, Kakashi my friend. With the power of youth and your strategic brilliance, victory is assured. Guy added from his side. Kakashi smirked, appreciating Guy's unwavering optimism even in the face of battle. Although he never showed up to others he cherished this friendship of theirs. The third division navigated through the labyrinthine network of trees and underbrush, maintaining a formation that spoke to Kakashi's tactical prowess. Guy, ever the energetic warrior, encouraged his comrades with uplifting words and a contagious spirit. As they progressed deeper into the forest, the enemy forces revealed themselves, masked figures moving stealthily among the trees. Kakashi's Sharingan word to life, and he signaled his division to prepare for engagement. The thunder rumbled ominously as Derui and his elite company faced the formidable duo of the Gold and Silver Brothers, Kinkaku and Ginkaku. The air was charged with tension as the battlefield crackled with impending conflict. Derui, wielding his versatile Rantun, Storm Release, Jutsu, stood at the forefront, flanked by the skilled Samui. The Gold and Silver Brothers, bearing the legendary treasured tools of the Sage of the Six Paths, advanced with malevolent grins. He had to take them considering the other shinobi were not a match for the brothers. Samui, be on guard. These two are more dangerous than they seem. And don't repunce to them, Derui said. Samui nodded, unsheathing her twin blades, infused with the power of lightning. I've heard stories about their prowess. We can't afford to underestimate them. Samui responded. The brothers, empowered by the tools that granted them incredible abilities, lunged forward with unparalleled speed. 
Derui and Samui moved in unison, their movements synchronized to counter the onslaught. Derui's black lightning clashed with Ginkaku's brute strength, while Samui gracefully evaded Ginkaku's attacks. The battle unfolded in a blur of elemental clashes and swift maneuvers. Derui's Rantan surged, creating arcs of powerful lightning that danced through the battlefield. Samui's blades cut through the air with precision, leaving trails of sparking energy. Kinkaku, the gold brother, unleashed his menacing chakra, transforming into a colossal, golden-skinned form. Derui gritted his teeth, recognizing the threat posed by this formidable transformation. This chakra, it's similar to Lord B. Derui muttered under his breath. Samui responded with a swift nod, deflecting Ginkaku's strikes as Derui prepared a decisive counterattack. Channeling the power of his Black Panther, a manifestation of his storm release, Derui unleashed a torrent of black lightning. The battlefield erupted with intensity as Derui's technique clashed with Ginkaku's colossal form. The very air crackled with the clash of opposing forces. Samui, showcasing her agility, moved with unparalleled grace, countering Ginkaku's relentless assault. In a moment of synergy, Derui and Samui synchronized their attacks. Derui's black lightning enveloped Kinkaku, exploiting a vulnerability in his colossal form. Samui, seizing the opportunity, unleashed a barrage of lightning-infused slashes, striking with precision. And they were not the only ones fighting a tough battle. In the heart of the battlefield, Mifune, the masterful samurai and captain of the second division, found himself facing an unexpected adversary, Hanzo of the Salamander, resurrected through the dark art of Edo Tensei. The air crackled with tension as the two skilled warriors locked eyes, memories of their past encounter resurfacing. Mifune, with his katana at the ready, surveyed the battlefield, ensuring the safety of his second company. Hanzo, adorned in the tattered remnants of his former attire, emanated an eerie presence as he prepared for the clash. Hanzo, even after death, you are creating issues for others. You once spared me, but I don't have the luxury to do the same today here to you, Mifyun said. Hanzo, his eyes devoid of emotion, merely grinned. The infamous salamander was ready to engage in a battle that echoed the history they shared. The clash began with the swift draw of Mifyun's katana, its gleaming blade reflecting the grim determination etched across his face. Hanzo, a master of poisons and swift strikes, moved with otherworldly agility, evading Mifyun's initial onslaught. Mifune's second company watched with bated breath as the two legendary figures clashed in a dance of steel. The echoes of clashing blades reverberated through the battlefield, the clash of philosophies and the weight of history embedded in each strike. Mifune, you always did have a flair for the dramatic. How amusing to cross blades once more. Hanzo said with a laugh. Mifune's response was a silent dedication to his duty. With each swing of his katana, he aimed to protect his comrades and ensure the safety of the alliance. Hanzo, fueled by the relentless nature of Edo Tensei, countered with deadly precision. The battlefield became a canvas of martial prowess, with Mifune's disciplined kenjutsu against Hanzo's unpredictable strikes. The second company watched as their captain held his ground, determined to prove that the indomitable spirit of the living could overcome even the resurrected. As the battle reached its zenith, Mifune unleashed his signature technique, the Aedo, a swift draw and sheath of his katana. The blade danced through the air, leaving arcs of energy in its wake. Hanzo, caught off guard by the sheer speed and precision, found himself unable to evade. Kakashi and Gai with their third company also found troublesome opponents. Under the moonlit sky, the third company led by Kakashi and Gai faced an ominous alliance of the seven swordsmen of the mist and all of them were Edo Tensei. The air was thick with anticipation as the shinobi prepared for a clash of legendary proportions. Kakashi didn't have his Sharingan anymore so before the war started, Kurito offered one of the Sharingan he collected to him, it was hard to explain but he took it nonetheless, exuding the vigor of youth, stood side by side, each ready to face their formidable opponents. The seven swordsmen well five exactly consider that Kisame and Zabuza aren't there, known for their deadly blades and merciless combat skills, loomed ominously before them. As the battle commenced, Kakashi and Gai moved in perfect synchronization, a dance of strategy and sheer physical prowess. The third company, inspired by their leaders, launched a coordinated assault against the five swordsmen. Kakashi faced the swift and elusive Jinan Akabino, known for his unparalleled speed. The clash of their techniques sent shockwaves through the battlefield. 
Kakashi's lightning-fast hand seals and precise strikes were met with Jinan's acrobatic maneuvers, creating a dazzling display of taijutsu mastery. Meanwhile, Gai, ever the exponent of the Eight Gates, faced the colossal Raiga Kurosuki. Gai unleashed the power of the morning peacock, sending waves of fiery punches at Raiga, who countered with his dual sword technique. The clash of their titanic forces shook the very ground beneath them. Suijetsu ordered by Sasuke also came, armed with a copy of the Executioner's Blade, and faced the third company's onslaught. Suijetsu's liquid form allowed him to evade attacks with eerie fluidity, but the unwavering determination of the allied shinobi forces pressed relentlessly forward. Chojuro, the wielder of the Hiramakarii, engaged in a fierce water jutsu battle with the company's water users, creating torrents of churning waves that engulfed the battlefield. As the battle raged on, Kakashi and Gai found themselves in a moment of synergy. With a nod of understanding, they executed a combination of jutsu, Kakashi's lightning blade and Gai's evening elephant, converging their attacks on the notorious seven swordsmen. Gai was the most important character there as he alone was dominating everyone there. While other companies started their match and even fought against the enemies, Kirito was commanding the fourth company and the biggest company out of all. Their target was the desert land. Out of all the places, this was the place which saw the most action in Kirito's opinion. First the dead Kages and then Madara Uchiha himself. So Kirito was excited if not anything, he just threw all the administrative work to Temari and only did the commanding, strategy and fighting. As the army moved forward, soon they were attacked by white Zetsu which came from underground, now maybe in any other place this strategy would have worked but not here when all thanks to the presence of Kirito. He spoiled the surprise that White Zetsu had planned for the 4th Division and then let the other shinobi handle them. He didn't want to waste his energy on those low-level enemies, he most likely had to take on the Kages, Madara, Abido and Sasuke too. And God forbid that last curve ball that Kishimoto threw at the end of the series also came. Fighting a freaking goddess was not something he wanted to do any time soon. While moving forward, Kirito finally senses a powerful chakra signature. No there were five chakra signatures and one of them was pretty familiar to him. Third rakage, Kirito almost cursed out, he had still bad blood with that man, who killed his teacher. But he also noticed that there was another familiar chakra among them, it was Gara. So Gara is dead and this bastard even revived him with Edo Tensei, he muttered under his breath. Then he looked around, finding any capable shinobi who could go against the Kage by himself but there was none. It was quantity over quality for him, well not like he didn't have trump cards of his own. Both Gara and Rosa are in their natural element, he has to take out them first before anything else. Kirito had no doubt that Orochimaru's control over the Edo Tensei would be better than what Kabuto was able to achieve in the canon. Halt, there are enemies coming. Prepare the traps, Kirito said to Temari, he already explained what kind of enemies they might face and of course, prepared for it. A little away from the marching army, five figures suddenly appear out of a coffin. At first, their bodies were lifeless but then suddenly their eyes opened although still pretty lifeless. They were the past Kages of four different villages. Gara and Rosa the fourth and fifth Kazakage. Emo the second Suchikich. Genjetsu the second Mizukage a third Reikage as their eyes opened he saw the sand-filled area around them and frowned. Genjetsu and Emo immediately recognized themselves. Reikage though was from a much younger generation than them and the same was the case with Rosa and especially Gara. Gara and Rosa looked at each other with complicated expressions on their faces, like wanted to say something but couldn't. But they didn't have the time for leisure chit-chat as unlike in the canon Orochimaru made them move towards the marching army. Kirito soon was able to see the five deceased Kages coming towards them. He instantly entered into sage mode. No playing around this time, this is war, one mistake and someone dies. Kirito tried to sense his marker on Gara, but it wasn't there, fair enough. Not like he didn't prepare beforehand. Kirito, Gara said from his side, as Kirito was standing in front of everyone while he also noticed Temari. We are not in our control. Make sure that you dodge this attack, Gara shouted as both he and Rosa started to make hand signs. Soon a combination attack of sand and gold dust arose from the desert and rushed towards the 4th division. Kirito didn't do anything as three clones and other member of the ceiling division were ready according to Kirito's plan, as they appeared in front of him and inhaled an ungodly amount of air in their lungs. Wind style, 
great wind hurricane, all the clones said while they were in sage mode. The other shinobi were also not behind, especially those wind-style shinobi as they released their jutsu as well. With a boom a mighty gush of wind forming a hurricane blocks the upcoming sand and gold dust wave and even pushes it back, making it disperse and sending the majority of the sand backwards, blinding the kages. Kirito anticipated right, that the kages started by using Gara and Rosa's powers. Now he effectively blinded four out of five kages for a few seconds. The last one was Mu who was flying high. Kirito didn't let this chance go to waste and vanish from his place. He already had one teleportation seal hidden where the kages would have come. Taking out his sword and covering it with hockey. He immediately went for Gara and Rosa. Why them? Well, Mu is hovering up in the air, Rakage might survive the attack, sturdy bastard he is. Genjetsu might be an illusion, he remembered that this guy although pretty funny and cool was still a kage and a master illusionist in that. Fun fact, Edo Tensei don't like hockey. They can't regenerate after being hit by hockey just like it was with the truth-seeking orbs. So all Kirito have to do is to make sure to gut them good. So that their all movements were blocked. Uzumaki style, one sword flow time five, Kirito said and in a fraction of a second he appeared near both Gara and Rosa and delivered multiple strikes, making them unable to move and then with the same movement, before the raging rakage gut him, took both Kazakage back to the army. Here seal them up, throwing the bodies of the two former Kazekages he said. There were some emotional moments with Gara, Termari and Rosa but he completely avoided it and looked only at the three remaining Kages. The worst part about Edo Tensei when you are controlling them manually is that there is resistance and thus no matter how powerful a shinobi you have summoned, will not perform like he would have in his heyday. Example where in front of all to see. TCH, he took down two before even the fight started, Orochimaru from a distance said with fury in his tone. Kirito after taking care of two out of five kages, like it was nothing, shifted his focus on the remaining three. Reikage, Mizukage and Tsuchikage. He knows that neither of them can do much damage to him, but the real problem is the army behind him. Thinking this, he had to first take out the Kage that would do the largest amount of large-scale damage. There is only one person here who can do that, he raised his eyes and saw the flying mummy who was already forming a white halo like attack, it was atomic dismantling jutsu of the Tsuchikich. Temari, help my clones to hold back the two on the ground, I will go after the one flying first, Kirito said and after forming two more clones or support and launching himself upward towards the mummy, he went after Mu the second Suchikage. Rakage after getting back his vision immediately charges for the army, fucking monster, not even seeing that there is an entire army in front of him. One of Kirito's clones started rushing to the Rakage, he had already done it once and considering that it doesn't require much power to handle Rakage if we know his secret. The clone was confident. Other clone sat down and was busy pointing out the real body of Mizukich. Kirito after taking out his sword, sent a powerful sword slash towards Mu which collided with his jutsu. He saw his sword attack do nothing to the white beam of light, breaking in front of him and then the enemy attack coming right at him. Wonder why Anoki is not coming this time around, I mean come you help out Gara in the anime, why not me, I am pretty sure I don't have any bad blood with the old man. Hell, I didn't even try my luck with his granddaughter. Kirito complained under his breath. Kirito though wasn't gonna play the game according to Mu. He put his sword in front of him and suddenly markings started to appear. Those markings were seals that Kirito was able to manifest in the air, and then just like how Minato did in the anime, the attack from Tsuchikage was transported away the moment the dust release attack connected with it. And the next moment, Kirito disappeared from his position. On the other side, clone Kirito was fighting with Reikage, he did not plan to waste much time but this rakage was not using this thunder spear right now. So he had to push the rakage until he did so. But he was able to after none of rakage's normal attacks connected. Thanks to past experience, Kirito was already used to the third rakage fighting style. Clone almost smiled when rakage extended his hand and pointed at Kirito. A raisingan was already building in his hand. Both then rushed towards each other and then, well everything was just like the cannon. Being a sealing master himself, Kirito's clone didn't need anyone to seal the withering rakage. By this time, the other clone was able to find the real body of Genjutsu. They didn't hand Gara sand but they had wind jutsu. Thanks to that they were able to replicate what Gara did in the anime and find the real Mizukage. 
I can't believe it, he took down three of the five past Hokage already, one of the shinobi said with widened eyes with pure amazement in his eyes and horror in his voice. He was actually very happy that Kirito Namikaze was not an enemy they were facing. Even people who knew Kirito a little bit like Termari were surprised. He seals my lord third with such ease, this man said a certain one eye shinobi from the cloud. While they were talking, the real Kirito was fighting with Mu, he was having some problems here considering that he couldn't fly. I have to say, after my death. Leaf sure have another monster, Mu said as he saw the underlying power of Kirito. Kirito made an ugly face, he had a method to handle this flying mummy but that was using hockey and he didn't want to do that so early in the battle. Unlike Chakra, using hockey makes him mentally exhausted which he can't have now. Not to mention, Chakra is not an issue considering the recent update in his template. Minato template 86%, he long has gotten access to KCM. After thinking about it, he was about to enter the KCM early but then he sensed a familiar Churka coming. So the old man really came huh, Kirito muttered under his breath and looked back, seeing an old man flying towards him. Namike's brat, leave Lord Mu to me, Anoki said with determination. Kirito would love to but honestly, he didn't want to, beating three kages just gave him 6% update in his template, he is sure that he can achieve up to 90% completion if he takes down the other two kages as well. Okay, I will handle the Mizukage and come back, please hang in there, Kirito said not even believing that Anoki could handle Mu in a few minutes. Finding Genjetsu's real body was the easy part, the harder part was sealing him, steaming Danger Tyranny clone was a pretty unique technique which Kirito remembered because he liked the technique personally. He didn't plan to let Genjetsu use that technique and end this fight with two moves. So Kirito masterfully drew Kurama's chakra without even entering KCM made a gigantic Raisingan. Massive Raisingan, Kirito shouted dropping down from height to increase his momentum, breaking the shell of the dam summon of the Mizukage. Kirito's eyes instantly locked on Genjetsu and got ready. Let's end this guy before he causes more trouble. First form, shaving flash, Kirito said with a smile, combining the power of his hyper speed, shaving in a certain breathing style which Kashin taught him but he didn't give much attention to him back then, he was sure but naive back then. With hockey on his sword, he easily takes out Genjetsu. And then he looked at his template. Minato template 88%, yup, knew it just needs to seal Tsuchikage now and we are done, Kirito smiled and turned back. Naruto didn't know what was going on outside, if he knew then he would have joined the war, and he would have been there at the side of his brother fighting together. But not anymore, after seeing what was going on outside, he rushed out to join the fight, Killer B and Jiraiya who was there training him also followed him. He just completed his training and now could use KCM pretty well. But unknown to him, escape was not gonna be that easy considering that Tsunade and Rakage was on their way to stop them. So after leaving the open sea, Naruto, Killer B, and Jiraiya found themselves halted by the imposing figures of Rakage and Tsunade. The air crackled with tension as the two leaders stood firm, determined to prevent the Jinchurikis from joining the war. Rakage, his lightning-infused aura radiating authority, addressed Naruto and Killer B with a stern gaze. Jiraiya didn't fight, he only decided to enter if Tsunade also enters the fight. Hold, Naruto, B. We cannot allow you to join this fight. It's too dangerous. Rakage said. Naruto being Naruto, didn't listen. I have to do something. I can't just stand by while everyone else is risking their lives. Naruto shouted. Tsunade, stepped forward, her eyes reflecting both concern and determination. Naruto, we understand your eagerness, but this battle requires careful strategy. You're our trump card, and we can't afford to lose you. Tsunade added sending a glare to Jiraiya saying that he was not helping here. Killer B, the Eight Tails Jinchuriki, added his perspective with a nod. Yo bro, this is no time to hold back, kid here need to meet his brother in the land of sand, shut up fool, Rakage shouted back. The atmosphere grew tense as Rakage and Tsunade exchanged a glance, silently acknowledging the difficulty of their decision. Finally, Rakage spoke with firm resolve. If you won't stand down willingly, we'll have to make you. With a nod from Tsunade, the two leaders prepared for action. Naruto and Killer B, initially taken aback, soon found themselves facing the combined might of the Rakage and Tsunade. Considering the fight is fair only when it two-on-two, two, 
Jiraiya stayed back but he didn't to just stand there, if Naruto can't handle Rakage then he will enter the fight. The battle unfolded with blinding speed. Rakage, fueled by his unparalleled speed, clashed with Naruto, his lightning release strikes forcing the young ninja to defend against an onslaught of precision and power. Meanwhile, Tsunade, renowned for her immense strength, engaged Killer B in a taijutsu duel, the air resonating with the impact of their blows. The face-off was very similar to the anime but with the only twist of Jiraiya being present there. Naruto, driven by the desire to prove himself, unleashed the power of the Nine Tails, his chakra flaring as he sought to break through Rakage's defenses he was in KCM with Sage Mode. Rakage, in turn, showcased the speed that earned him the moniker of the fastest shinobi, skillfully evading Naruto's attacks. On the other side, Killer B and Tsunade clashed with a display of raw strength and finesse. B's fluid movements and unique swordsmanship clashed against Tsunade's unparalleled strength and medical expertise. Despite the intense struggle, Rakage and Tsunade fought with the singular goal of protecting Naruto and B. Their experience and leadership shone through as they countered every move, redirecting the young warrior's attacks without causing lasting harm. As the battle continued, Naruto's talk no jutsu was able to get to Tsunade and stop her in her tracks, now Rakage was the only problem, but what a problem is the arse he was. Things from that point onwards just went on just like anime and Naruto was able to dodge Rakage's fastest attack and considering that Jiraiya was also with them, both Tsunade and Rakage let them go. Later on, all three of them kept on going and met the two best duo in the history of anime. Itachi freaking Uchiha and Nagato mother of asterisk King Uzumaki. Naruto, his eyes narrowed with determination, stepped forward, flanked by the Jiraiya and the Killer Bee. Itachi's Sharingan gleamed, while Nagato's six paths of pain awaited Orochimaru's commands. Naruto Uzumaki. You look like your brother, although I can say not as bright. Itachi said. Nagato, his rinnegan piercing through the darkness, echoed Itachi's sentiment. Sorry Naruto but we are not in control, you have to beat us. Nagato said. The battle began with a blur of motion. Naruto, too was not holding back and showing his newly found Ninetales power. Their strikes echoed through the night, each blow carrying the weight of their shared history. Jiraiya faced Nagato, a master of the Rinnegan. The battlefield transformed into a storm of jutsu, as fire and toads clashed against the gravitational pull of Nagato's powers. Killer B, the Eight Tails Jinchuriki, engaged in a rhythmic taijutsu dance with the Six Paths of Pain. His blades clashed against the mechanized warriors, each strike demonstrating the mastery of his unique combat style. But all of a sudden, he started to feel something in his stomach. The battle was getting chaotic as this time around, unlike how it was with the pages, none of them was holding back. Soon Killer B couldn't take it anymore and opened his mouth to vomit but instead of his puke, a black crow came out. Even both Jiraiya and Naruto were grossed out. Itachi thought knew, he was the one who put this crow inside the Killer B when he went to collect the Eighth Tails, betting his last chance to save this world, and apparently, it worked. From then on Itachi switched sides like the anime and helped them to handle Nagato. The battle reached its zenith as the living clashed with the resurrected. Jutsu collided, creating shockwaves that shook the very foundation of the battlefield. I will be going now Jiraiya-sama, I have one last mission to accomplish, he said to Jiraiya in secret sign language before leaving. The bonds you forge are truly powerful, Naruto Uzumaki, Nagato said before getting sealed by Jiraiya. Jiraiya had a hint of where might Itachi be going, he said his last mission, Jiraiya started to connect the dots, especially when he also is a San Nin. He looked back at Naruto and after some contemplation finally decided to go with Itachi, after all, he knew Orochimaru the best. Hell, he was not the only one, Kurito himself sent Tobarama to locate and stop Orochimaru. He knew that stopping Orochimaru was the most important otherwise this fight might never end. Thus the most suitable person to send was Tobarama and just to fuck with him, he also paired him with Edo Tensei Shirsue after all Tobarama is a censor and with one command from Kurito can join the fight no matter how far he is thanks to Hiration and Shirsue might be the only person who can stop Orochimaru and even control him thanks to his Koto Amatsukami. Naruto, remember that I believe in your dreams, if you think that you can do it and you have my full support, Jiraiya internally said and left. The excuse he gave to both Killer B and Naruto though was entirely different. Naruto and B then kept on moving towards the main front line, 
passing through the jungle to finally reach the sand plain. But just like in the anime, he was stopped by upcoming enemies. And these enemies were on another hand the previous Jinchurikis. The air crackled with tension as the resurrected warriors, once Jinchurikis themselves, prepared to unleash their devastating powers. This time around Abido had both the Rinnegan eyes and Thies more control over the new paths of pain. Naruto and Killer B exchanged a determined glance before facing the Edo Tensei Jinchurikis. The ground trembled as the new paths of pain moved with eerie synchronization, each bearing the immense power of a tailed beast. It was their luck that Abido himself had not come yet, they were only facing the six paths right now the battle commenced with blinding speed. Naruto, surrounded by a vibrant aura of chakra, charged forward with Raisingans in both hands. Killer B, wrapping a rhythmic mantra, ready to counter the overwhelming force of the resurrected Jinchurikis. The Edo Tensei Jinchurikis, once masters of immense power, moved with relentless precision. Streams of chakra clashed in midair as the battlefield became a canvas of vibrant colors, echoing the intensity of their titanic clash. Naruto faced a barrage of attacks from multiple directions. Each Edo Tensei Jinchuriki showcased the signature techniques of their respective tailed beasts, torrents of water, gusts of wind, and torrents of sand clashed against Naruto's defenses. Naruto even knew some of them and that makes fighting them just that much harder. Killer B, using his immense strength and agility, countered the assault with a flurry of tail whips and powerful bijou bombs. The battlefield erupted with explosions as the chakra-infused clashes reverberated through the air. Naruto was burning through his chakra, now his chakra was taken by nine tails in exchange nine tails was also absorbing his chakra. Naruto using his unpredictable mind, pulled off an insane stun and gave an opening to be. Killer B, seizing the opportunity, lashed out with his eight tails tentacles, creating a whirlwind of chakra that swept through the battlefield. The Edo Tensei Jinchurikis, momentarily disoriented, struggled to regain their composure. Honestly, right now Naruto and B are getting overwhelmed, not only did the opponents have the powers of their biju but also they had complete synergy with their actions as their vision was connected. Naruto actually never fought pain in this timeline and thus his knowledge about them is very limited. Right now, B was thinking of entering into his fully biju mode but before he did that, another someone appeared there. This other someone was none other than Abito and beside her was Edo Tensei Konan, that bastard Orochimaru was able to even bring her back. But there was one more, Sasuke also came with him. Reminder that here Sasuke is with Akatsuki, still trying to be the hero Naruto. You should stop these pointless endeavors. It's pathetic, Sasuke's sharp remark makes a tick mark on Naruto's forehead. Yeah, so is the case with your villain career. How many times did you get your ass kicked till now? By the way, Naruto retorted, one perk of being with Kirito is that he too has a little foul mouth in the end. He had a very complicated feeling right now. Both Jiraiya and Kirito said that Sasuke is no longer an ally but he really didn't want to fight him. But seeing just what kind of power he would be facing right now, he gritted his teeth. He can't show mercy to Sasuke like he did the last time. Sasuke on the other hand didn't show any outward reaction but he sure was annoyed internally. But before he can say anything, he is interrupted by Abito. Uzumaki Naruto, your brother has caused me quite a lot of trouble, there was already killing intent in his voice, after all, he lost all of his Sharingan thanks to Kirito, not to mention many of his plans also failed because of Kirito. Yeah, he has a habit of causing trouble for troublesome shinobi like you, Naruto smirked. I see, I wonder how he will feel fighting his own brother when after your death I resurrected you, Abshio ruthlessly said. Ha, huh, not a chance, Naruto replied. Actually there is quite a bit of chance, B looked at the six Jinchuriki in two Uchiha with trepidation. One had Rinnegan while the other had Eternal Mangekyo, and lastly that sexy blue-haired woman, B didn't know but he sensed power from her so he was alert. Even you can't be this big of an idiot, look clearly Naruto, you two got no chance. You are outnumbered and outmatched here. Kirito is not coming to save you today, you are all alone, Sasuke said as his Sharingan flared to life. You are listening to this audiobook on web novel audiobooks Tkthigud. Indeed facing Abito with Rinnegan, Sasuke with Eternal Mangekyo Sharingan and then six of the Paths of Pain with the power of their Biju on top of that is nothing less than a death sentence. Even someone like Kirito would have trouble handling all of them. There were beats of sweat rolling on Naruto's face while B was the same. 
but before any of them move a voice echoed in the silent forest. Who said he is alone? All of them were surprised at this and looked at where the voice came and almost all of their eyes widened to extreme proportions. There were seven people standing there on top of different trees. Of them were wearing a black cloak with red clouds printed on them and the other two were wearing Kanoha headband. This person were none other than Deidara, Kakuzu, Haydn, Sasori and Kisame under the control of Kurshio he was sent here to protect Naruto and help him. He always wanted to bring Akatsuki to the good side, I mean just think about the menace they could have been if worked together for the good side. It was nothing less than any Naruto fan's wet dream but there was more. Kirito also sent two juggernauts with them, one had with same red eyes and almost as same face as Sasuke. It was Fugaku Uchiha, Sasuke's father. Kirito got his body way back when Itachi exterminated his own clan standing there like a boss and making Sasuke's heart pound inside while the other was. Kirito, Naruto shouted. But Naruto immediately saw differences, like how he was older with both of his hands. And when finally the eyes of both met. Naruto instantly knew who he was looking at. His eyes widened in disbelief. You are just like your father Namake's brat, Anoki said while looking at the second Suchikage sealed in front of him. He in the end needed Kirito's help to seal his predecessor. I will take that as a compliment, Kirito replied while not even looking at the old man. His attention was on his template update as the only reason he fought those Kages alone was because his template was upgrading like crazy back then. Minato template 90%, ding, congratulation host on unlocking KCM2, a smile appeared on Kirito's face and he sighed with relief, he turned to the army which overwhelmed the white Zetsu and almost was over on their end. Thanks to Kirito, there was no impersonation this time around, Kirito even sent clones to other divisions to identify the Zetsu clones impersonating the shinobi from the alliance and helping other divisions. It was a compliment, Anoki said with a smile but then suddenly a massive chakra was spotted by many of the shinobi. This chakra just suddenly appeared and even Kirito was taken aback. He looked back and noticed one single coffin appear out of nowhere and the one summoning the coffin was none other than the second Suchikage. Kirito before even waiting for the coffin to open snapped his head to see where he just sealed that Suchikage but he found that the mummy put one of his clones in there. Some sort of advance replacement maybe? This, this can't be, he heard Anoki say this and he already had some idea of what the old man just saw. He slowly turned his head towards where the coffin was and saw the devil himself standing there. Madara Fu Asterisk King Uchiha, he said like the words were venom, not like he didn't like Madara's character, in fact he was a fan but this bastard has caused much trouble in this world and he can't help but resent it. What is this, are you the one who summoned me here, Madara asked while looking at the army in front of him and the mummy standing beside him. Ku 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 ku, Madara Uchiha I am Orochimaru and I am working with Abito. He asked me to revive you to help us, Orochimaru gave his best shady village talk in front of a badass villain. Kirito saw this interaction happening and started to think of a solution to seal this guy up. He actually had a way. While normal sealing would have worked, he created a way to seal Madara. The problem is that he had to summon Shinigami for that, not something he wanted to do, let's put that as the last resort. Kirito muttered to himself as he knew that he would not die but he would lose much of his life when he did that. But he still acted like he didn't know the person who came out. Seems like you know the person, Orion asked not even thinking that there was literally a Godzilla's eyes statue of Hashirama and this man in the valley of the end. Even Anoki didn't think much and replied with dread in his tone, of course, there is no way I can forget that man's face, he is Madara Uchiha, Anoki replied. Oh, that was Kirito's simple response before he said. Back off, this is gonna get troublesome real soon, Kirito shouted toward the army. On the other side, Orochimaru was explaining the entire situation to Madara. That is Kirito Namikaze, he is the strongest shinobi of his generation and has spoiled many of our plans till now. He is also the chief commander of the shinobi alliance as you can see, Orochimaru said using Mu's body. Really, Madara shifted his gaze towards Kirito and a dense pressure fell on him. Yup, he is in a different league altogether, Kirito hum and a smile appeared on his face, although he had Edo Tensei Hashirama to fight Madara but. But I too want a piece of this asshole before that, and then there came a time when both of their eyes met. And with that Kirito just said. Old man, you take care of that mummy, I will handle Madara, Kirito was still staring at Madara while saying this. Don't be an idiot brat, 
you don't understand what Madara Uchiha represents. That man ruled an era. You are no match against him. Anoki snorted and internally decided to help out Kirito. But Kirito was having none of it. Maybe but you better remember this, that era has long gone, and this era can only be referred to by one name and one name alone, this era is Kirito Namikaze, Kirito said and started to walk slowly towards Madara's direction. Shinobi Alliance Headquarters In the tense confines of the Shinobi Alliance Headquarters, Hokage, Kazakage, Mizukage and Reikage, sat in a somber meeting room. The air was thick with apprehension as news reached them of the unexpected appearance of Madara on the battlefield, where Kirito and others were planning to confront him. Tsunade stood at the head of the table, her expression a mix of concern and determination. This changes everything. Madara's presence on the battlefield could tip the scales. We need to act, Madara is just as dangerous as my grandfather, we can't underestimate him, Tsunade said with worry in his voice. Chiyo, the Kazakage, leaned forward, her usually composed demeanor revealing a trace of urgency. We cannot underestimate the threat Madara poses. If Kirito and the others are facing him, we need to reinforce their efforts. Chiyo too was an old lady and knew what the name Madara Uchiha implies. A tense silence hung in the room as the Kages contemplated the gravity of the situation. May voiced the collective unease. Madara Uchiha, I have only heard tales but if any of those are true then just sending forces will only add more casualties. Sending our forces might not be enough. May added Rakage pounded his fist on the table. Then I'll go myself. We can't afford to hold back now. We are not useful here anyways, Rakage shouted. Hiruzen was also standing here, but he was not in his true form but rather in a hinge and stroked his beard in contemplation. It's a risk, but we may have no other choice. If Madara is unchecked, the entire alliance could crumble, we need to do something about that Tsunade, he was standing beside Swanda and slowly said to her. As the Kages debated their course of action, Tsunade, with a firm resolve, made a decision. I'll go with you, Reikage. We need all the firepower we can muster. Tsunade added. The Kages nodded in agreement. The urgency of the situation demanded unity, setting aside the usual politics and differences. But they currently didn't have much way to get there on time, even if they departed right now it will take them some time to arrive there. The newly formed Paths of Pain, now infused with the power of the Edo Tensei Jinchurikis, clashed with the remaining Akatsuki members. The air was charged with chakra as the two formidable forces collided. Conan, Pain's former partner, now stood among the Paths of Pain. She faced Kakuzu, the mercenary with stitched together hearts, and Haydn, the zealot of Jashin, who had been resurrected through Abido's dark arts. The landscape quivered with intensity as Conan unleashed a barrage of paper jutsu, each fold and crease a deadly weapon. Kakuzu, with his elemental affinities, countered the onslaught with a barrage of jutsu. Haydn, his immortal body revived, lunged with his scythe, seeking the thrill of bloodshed. Meanwhile, the paths of pain continued their assault. The earth trembled beneath their feet as they Sasori, the master puppeteer. Kisame, created torrents of water, clashing with the ferocity of the path's attacks. Sasori, commanding an army of puppets, orchestrated a complex dance of blades and strings, challenging the synchronized movements of the Edo Tensei warriors. While this was happening, Naruto, Sasuke, Fugaku, Minato and Abido stayed back. The atmosphere was heavy. Naruto just realized just who was standing in front of him he had to say that his father was the exact copy of Kirito. Ah no that, maybe the other way around, he muttered. There was much to say between the father and son, and unlike Kirito, Naruto was even more emotional. This was not the badass knucklehead ninja of the leaf or the future seventh Hokage. But just a teenager who longed for family all his life. As the battle unfolded, Kakuzu, Haiden, Kisame, and Sasori proved to be formidable adversaries, utilizing their unique abilities and battle experience. The Paths of Pain, however, moved with relentless efficiency, undeterred by the resilience of their opponents. But still, this situation was much better than what Naruto and B had to handle in the anime. Naruto wanted to ask many questions, after seeing his father for the first time, remember that this time Naruto met with Kasina, which I did cover, when he was training in KCM but didn't meet Minato as Kirito fought pain in the end. I know you have many things to ask and say son but this is not the time, 
Minato's heart broke after seeing Naruto's pain-filled eyes. Kirito was different, he never saw this pain in Kirito's eyes. At best, he saw longing for family just like Naruto but not much pain. Naruto on the other hand, his eyes were filled with pain. Minato wanted to say so much, wanted to explain why both he and Kushina couldn't be with him and Kirito. But right now enemies were standing right in front of them. It was indeed not the time. But this was not the only pair of father and son who was standing there. There was one more. Sasuke's heart was pounding inside him after seeing his father in front of him. He, being with Akatsuki still now, was naturally aware of Edo Tensei. So his blood started to boil when he saw his father was used like a puppet. Father, Sasuke finally broke out of his shell and said. Sasuke, what are you doing? Fugaku asked. Fugaku had only basic knowledge of what happened which he got while traveling with Minato and coming here. This meeting was even more painful for Fugaku to see his younger son joining Akatsuki. Abito who was watching this all gritted his teeth. Fugaku was trying to convince Sasuke to stop this madness and even telling them what really happened all those years ago. Minato looked at Abito with complicated feelings. Of course, Kirito told him about Abito and what exactly was going on. Abito, why are you doing this, Minato said and this shocked Abito. No one except Orochimaru and Madara knows that he is Abito Uchiha. How did Minato find out? This mind was working several miles a second. Kirito on the battlefield slowly walks towards Madara. Temari seeing Kirito walking towards Madara alone started to panic, she wanted to help but knew that she was no match in the upcoming battle. Even the entire army might not be enough for Madara. Kirito actually talked about this before their march, that most likely they will face someone like Madara. At that time he never gave any reason but now Temari started to connect the dots. Kirito explicitly said not to interfere in a fight of that level. Let him handle it. Madara on the other hand watching Kirito coming towards him, smirks. It has been a very long time since he danced. Suddenly a powerful killing intent rushed towards Kirito, this killing intent was so potent that even many shinobi in the army got chills even when it was not directed towards them. Kirito though was unfazed. For someone with the qualifications of the conqueror, this was nothing. Totally unfazed, kept on talking towards Madara, making as much distance between them and the army as possible. Once the battle starts. It was will be pure chaos. Not to mention he can't use conquerors if they are so close to him. Madara seeing Kirito totally unfazed by his killing intent grim and a smile started to appear on his face. He jumped down from his high position, just like he did in the anime to fight the Shinobi Alliance but here his target was only Kirito. This should be enough. Never have used KCM let alone KCM2. And the best test subject is coming right at me. Kirito also smiled. Same smile as Madara, both of them were ready to write. Finally an opponent who I can go all out against. As long I can seal this guy up here, we are golden. Kirito mutters to himself. Both Kirito and Madara were staring at each other and then like a sign only received by both of them, they took action. Like magic they vanish from the places they were standing and suddenly appear somewhere in the middle of their line of sight, blocking each other's attacks. Kirito was much faster and more agile than Madara, but speed was not everything when fighting with the Shinigami of the Shinobi world. Kirito found himself pushed back a few steps by Madara. Although not as fast as Kirito, Madara was stronger in raw strength, not to mention his Sharingan was not like Sasuke, it was on a whole another level. He countered Kirito's speed with much ease and overpowered him. Besides the Sharingan, the biggest contributing factor here was Madara's experience with fighting which Kirito can't match even with Minato's memories. It is worth mentioning that Kirito was right now on his base, not using any power-ups. Madara seeing Kirito's speed was intrigued, this speed was even better than Tobarama. He was getting excited to fight the best this generation has to offer. Sasuke might have argued on this but we all know the truth. Kirito on the other hand wasn't surprised, he knew that he couldn't handle Madara with his base, even if Madara was just using his normal Sharingan. But he went with his base to just get a feeling of where he is compared to Madara he saw in his eyes that there were only three Tomo Sharingan right now. And no Kirito was not worried about Genjutsu, he had long found a way to handle any Genjutsu thrown in his direction, thanks to his Uzumaki sealing knowledge, he created a special seal to handle it. 
Not like he was even considering that someone like Madara would resort to Jinjutsu in the first place. Ha, Kirito made a fist and again launched himself towards Madara. Only having one hand means that he can't pull off some tricky moves which he used to in his early days. His black cloak fluttered as the collision of his fist and Madara resonated with the surrounding. Although Madara's current intention was to toy with Kirito even he could say that Kirito was heavily holding back. This slightly irks him. So he added more power, as powerful chakra came to life and increased his speed. And rushing towards Kirito. But in terms of speed, Kirito was second to none. Raisingan, Kirito formed a Raisingan and went directly for Madara. Madara might be able to use Rinnegan, and that means that he most likely can absorb his pure chakra attacks like Raisingan. But knowing his character he won't be at this level of fight. And Kirito's suspicion was right. It didn't even phase him as Madara pulled some crazy maneuver out of his ass and dodged the attack. You will need more to make me serious, Madara said, not even using Kirito's name as it was beneath him. He was the kind of man who only remembers the name of the strong. Kirito right now was not worth it. In fact, he did hear his name from Orochimaru but just won't say it. It runs both ways Grandpa, was Kirito's swift response as suddenly he took his sword and sent a sword energy huddling towards Madara. The bastard didn't show much expression and only jumped up to dodge the attack. But internally he too was getting interested, sword attack like that wasn't common when he was alive. Interesting, Madara said in an almost mocking tone. Kirito didn't pay much attention to Madara's words and put pressure on his legs. Instantly zooming and increasing his speed and invading Madara's personal space. Uzumaki style, water divider, Kirito shouted and sent a powerful sword strike at almost point-blank range. This attack got a hit right, well it did but before that, a blue layer of dense chakra appeared between both Kirito and Madara, shielding him from the sword strike. The attack was slammed into the impregnable shield of Susanoo. Even Madara's incomplete Susanoo which only had outer covering was strong enough to block Kirito's sword strike. Don't tell me this is the only thing you can do, Madara taunted. Didn't wait and launch another attack in succession. Here take this, Kirito said and put a black and red seal on top of Susanoo's outer bones and vanished before Madara's eyes. This stunned Madara for a second. He was still now comparing Kirito with Tobarama considering that both fighting styles and even to some extent the personalities were similar but he was honestly not expecting Kirito to even use Tobarama's jutsu. Madara didn't do anything, he was not even slightly worried about the seal Kirito placed on the Susanoo, Susanoo is his strongest technique besides his Rinnegan eyes and he completely believed in Susanoo's defensive capabilities. B.O.M. Kirito who appeared near where the army was, saw the explosion happening and repeated a very famous line in Naruto. Art is an explosion, Kirito smirked, what he placed on Madara's Susanoo was no ordinary explosion tag, no sir it was a, Kirito Namike's special mini atomic tag. Inspired by the Uzumaki special seal, perfected under the frustration of having nothing to blast Biju with and powered by none other than Biju's powerful chakra. This tag is something special. While Kirito was admiring his art, the shinobi in the army almost experienced an eardrum's rupturing sound. The heat of the blast was felt by them even after being thousands of meters away from it. And from there, several kilometers away, a certain member of Akatsuki with blonde hairs while fighting one of the new parts of pain, suddenly jerked up, like his soul calling for him. He looked towards the land of wind and muttered, something, Something tells me that something really beautiful just took place, said Daidara but Sasori lectured him to concentrate on the fight. Kirito waited until the blast died down and then again teleported back, trying to find where Madara was. Thanks to his observation hockey, he was able to sense Madara. Half of the bastard's body was gone and slowly generating. Oh, you are looking serious there, Kirito said with a smile. Kirito had a smug look on his face after seeing the regenerating Madara. He was obviously very proud of his atomic seals. But he didn't waste any more time acting like a typical anime villain and took out his sealing kit to seal Madara up. With just a couple of one-handed moves, he activated the sealing technique as a big scroll unfolded and the paper started to wrap around Madara's still regenerative body. Not too shabby if I say so myself. Now if only this seal holds up, Kirito said to himself and waited. The main concern was about what Madara did in the anime, even after sealing him the bastard broke through the seal. This was obviously an issue for Kirito. 
Thus he didn't let his guard down and waited until the Pokemon was really trapped inside the Poke Ball before shouting, I caught Madara, unfortunately for Kirito and fortunately for our dear readers, the MC will never get the chance to shout that as the seal which was holding one of the biggest terrorists in anime history started to break and Madara eventually came out. Well, I was expecting this to happen. I would have been more excited if it had worked then I am disappointed now. We just can't deal with Madara freaking Uchiha that easily after all, Kirito muttered under his breath and sighed. Now the only way he has to seal Madara is to directly summon the Shinigami and let him do the job. But to even do that, he once again has to destroy Madara's body which by the looks on Madara's face, will not be easy. I commence you for your effort. I never expected that a trick could really do that much damage to me, Madara said with his usual uncaring tone but there was a little irritation hidden there. What's your name young shinobi? He said looking right at Kirito's blue eyes. He actually knew it but still asked just to announce that now he was serious. I am Namike's Kirito, Kirito said nonchalantly as he was more concerned about forming a plan to beat Madara again. Then let's dance, that was Madara's last word before a huge surge of chakra appeared around him. This chakra was much denser than any normal kage and almost felt limitless. Considering that Edo Tensei does have limitless chakra, it's not wrong to say that it's infinite. Kirito saw Madara forming hand signs and it looked very familiar to him, a bad feeling started to engulf him. Deep forest emergence, Madara said and then it happened. Like the world was shaking upon encountering a nine magnitude earthquake. Then trees started to emerge from the desert land, powerful and big roots started to erupt out of the ground and move towards Kirito. This wood style was on a whole another level, still nothing close to Hashirama but it was stronger than Abito, Danzo or Sasuke combined. Oh I guess he is finally serious, Kirito quickly looked behind him and approximately a distance of 2 kilometers was standing the 4th division. Still waiting for Kirito's order. Finding that they are far enough that the emerging forest won't reach them. Kirito rather than blocking the attack, dodge it. Teleporting away from the direct line of attack, he from on Madara's rear. Taking advantage of he again took out his sword and went off another attack. But this time Madara was not playing around, instantly massive chakra came to life and an eternal Susanoo formed around Madara's body. It was still not a complete Susanoo and only the upper half but it was impenetrable armor that was guarding Madara like a fortress. Man, Sharingan is such a cheat, what the hell Kishimoto was smoking when making these eyes, Kirito complained putting back his sword. Orange markings suddenly appear around his eyes, stating that he entered into sage mode. He was not planning to do this early but at his base, he is not a match for Madara. Wind style, Rasen Shuriken, Kirito in an instant created a powerful Rasengan Shuriken and threw it towards Susanoo. The speed of forming an attack of this caliber was jaw-dropping and Kirito too was only able to do as his system gave him full mastery of the technique. Rotating violently and making a dangerous sound, the spinning ball of destruction makes a beeline towards the half-complete Susanoo. Madara thanks to his eternal man Gekyo and was able to assist with the danger level of this attack in an instant. He started putting more chakra on Susanoo to make it withstand the upcoming attack. The movement Raisin Shuriken hit Susanoo, a giant dome of rotation wind erected in the middle of the desert. It was big enough for even the Shinobi Alliance to see and admire. First that blast and now this. Just how many dangerous jutsu that kid is hiding, someone said and others nodded. But Kirito was different, thanks to his observation hockey and being in sage mode, he was able to sense that although his attack did damage it was never able to touch Madara's main body. Susanil got broken in half but still protected Madara. Interesting, you are the second person who has ever pushed me this much, Madara said and he wasn't lying. Besides Hashirama, there was no one who can even fight him even at this level. But it is just that, this level. This level was nothing to what he was used to when fighting with Hashirama. Soon the broken Susanoo started to regenerate and even gotten bigger. A towering giant suddenly appear in the middle of the sand desert. Well this is still better than getting bombarded by a meteor, Kirito said after watching the giant Susanoo in front of him taking out two equally big swords. A towering giant suddenly appear in the middle of the sand desert. Well this is still better than getting bombarded by a meteor, Kirito said after watching the giant Susanoo in front of him taking out two equally big swords. Kirito didn't get much time before a giant lightsaber came slicing the air towards him. 
It was pretty fast but Kirito was able to teleport in time and get away. Okay, I guess it's high time that I put all that nine tail power to use, Kirito muttered to himself, almost grumbling. Reaching out to the dormant power inside him, he started to pull, thanks to his system, he should directly enter into KCM. And that was the case, eternal orange and goldish chakra started to flare around Kirito as the power of the nine tail chakra cloak started to wrap around him. It was almost like Naruto's first transformation after beating Kurama. Madara didn't care what kind of trick that boy did, he once again swung his sword at Kirito with the mighty hands of Susano. Kirito's eyes were closed he was much more focused on entering into KCM. But suddenly he senses something through his observation hockey. He instinctively took out his sword and covered it with armament hockey. Crash, the sound of metal crashing came as both Kirito's sword covered with armament hockey and Madara's Susanoo's sword crashed. And to even Kirito's surprise, he was able to block Madara's attack. He was honestly not expecting that, it's worth noting that Kirito was still on just KCM and not KCM2. One downside of never using KCM before is that he has to get used to its power before using KCM2. Otherwise, it will just work against him. Madara on the other side looked at Kirito with a little surprise. He didn't know that Kirito was the Jinchuriki of Nine Tails. But he was more interested in Kirito's sword. Haki was not a power which he had ever seen before. This intrigued him and a soft smile appeared on his face. Susano then ended up swinging his other sword towards Kirito, making him come out of his daze. Uzumaki style, great water divider, Kirito vanished from his place, dodging the upcoming attack and appeared a little away from Madara's, swinging his sword and sending a powerful sword strike towards Susanoo. Madara this time didn't just take the attack lying there flat, he too swung his two massive swords to counter the upcoming attack. This is crazy, what level of battle is this turning into, Tamari asked in a trembling voice as seeing a giant Susanoo fighting with one orange and goldish figure constantly flickering from place to place. There was another fight going on between Anoki and Mu but in front of Kirito's and Madara's fight, it was nothing. We need to find a way to help him. He can't just fight with Madara alone, someone said, and although many shinobi agreed with that there was just no way for them to interfere in that level of fight. With Naruto, the situation was not that great either. The paths of pain and revive Akatsuki members were performing almost the same. Kirito's plan to use Fugaku to stop Sasuke didn't work out that well and now the fight between the Naruto and Sasuke was about to start once again. So Wabi fought with Konan, Minato, and Fugaku fought with Abito. An outcome they knew would come in the end. Rasengan, Naruto shouted and rushed toward Sasuke. Chidori, Sasuke was the same. In fact, the situation was almost similar to the canon. But unlike the canon, this Sasuke was stronger than the current Naruto. Naruto by now haven't gotten KCM2 while Sasuke already had Eternal Mangekyo Sharingan with Hashirama Cell inside. Him. Both were blasted back after the collision between their attacks. I have enough of you Naruto, Sasuke shouted, although he was not planning on using his Majikyo but he had to. So a Susanoo started to form around him. Soon a complete Susanoo was formed in front of both Naruto. Minato although fighting with Abito, was more on paper than real fighting. He was trying to use Tok no Jutsu to turn Abito into a new leaf. Well unfortunately Naruto's father failed to understand that this particular Jutsu only works after giving a really good ass whopping to the enemy. Not before that. Seeing that Naruto was having a problem handling Sasuke he was about to go there to help Naruto but before that, Fugaku stopped him. Let me go there Minato. He is my son. It's my responsibility, Fugaku said and before even a reply from Minato's side, he was gone. Kirito slowly but steadily was getting used to KCM and was thinking of using KCM too already. But just before that, he senses a similar chakra coming towards him. To his surprise, he saw all the five Kages standing there. He quickly teleported from there and at good time as well as only seconds later an earth-shattering attack was delivered where he was standing before. Kirito looked at the five Kages with amazement in their eyes, he knew that currently there was no way for them to come to 4th Division Rescue that quickly. But he got the memories of his clones and smiled. They use one of his clones to teleport there, smart bastards all of them are. You are late for the party, Kirito smirked and pointed towards Madara at his back. Don't worry, from now on we will take care of him, Rakage was the first to speak. 
Oh my, you are quite a handsome one, if only you were a little older, May said totally neglecting Madara and his huge ass Susanu after looking at Kirito. Even if I have only one hand, Kirito wanted to ask but didn't. He didn't want to waste any more time here. He better get going to Naruto. He might need his help there. So after making a clone, he can get the Kage's up-to-date information on this place, he gets going. Well, he was not just leaving those poor little Kage's along with that big Uchiha bully. He sensed someone arriving and smirked. That someone should be more than enough for Madara at least until he comes back. After leaving the Kage's to their fate, Kirito vanished from his place and went directly to where Naruto was. Again he has a safety net for those Kage's if it comes to that. So he was not worried. When Kirito arrived in the forest plain, he found everything devastated. He didn't even use his eyes and blasted his observation hockey to Max to figure out Naruto's current location. If there is one person who is the most important in this war, then it's Naruto. Nine Tails holds almost 50% power of the Ten Tails. Without it, resurrecting Kayuga is almost impossible. Or at least he believes so. He is not sure about his own Nine Tails as he only now has the chakra and it is his body which regenerates that chakra now. So maybe Madara and Abito can take out Nine Tail chakra from him but it will be finite about only how much he has at that time. And it will soon run out and won't regenerate on its own. And this is the reason why, no matter what, he can't let Naruto fall into Abito's and Madara's hands. When he finally arrived he saw multiple biju standing in front of Naruto, Minato, Fugaku and some of the Akatsuki members he brought back with Edo Tensei. Hmm seems like shit is getting real, huh, Kirito joked as soon as he arrived. But at the same time, he also noticed that among those biju there was one more titanic entity. A purple Susanoo. It was Sasuke. Kirito, Naruto almost shouted as he saw his brother, finally things were looking good. Still, they were having much difficulty handling just the Edo Tensei past Jinchuriki but now they turned into full-fledged biju. There is also Sasuke bloody Uchiha among them. Not to mention, behind all those biju was standing a Bito on Ghetto statue. Kirito seeing Naruto still in his KCM1 form just cursed internally. Why that damn fox is not sharing his chakra with Naruto at this crucial time was beyond him. Kirito we need more support here, where is Lord first, second and third? Minato directly cut to the chase, it was already hard enough for Fugaku with his half-ass Susanoo and Killer Bee to hand so many tail beasts. They are busy but don't worry. I have an idea, Kirito said and looked at Naruto. Give me a fist bump will ya, I need to talk with nine tails for a second, Kirito raised his fist and said. Naruto looked confused at this but did it nonetheless. Inside Nine Tail Seal Nine Tail was behind his bars, looking at the recent arrival with disgust. But there was something which even he was curious about. Kirito had his chakra but he can't find his own consciousness at all. Yo Kurama, what's up, Kirito said with a knowing smile. Nine Tail's eyes shot up, widening to unknown proportions, that name was only supposed to be known by his father and siblings. No one else. How come Kirito knows it? Underneath the darkened sky, the formidable alliance of the five Kages, Reikage, Tsunade, Anoki, Meitarumi, and Chiyo, stood united, facing the looming threat of Madara Uchiha. The air crackled with tension as they prepared to confront the legendary shinobi who had once been a leader of the Uchiha clan. After Kirito went away, it was their duty to protect and guide the Shinobi Alliance. Honestly, they were not expecting Kirito to directly ditch them like this, Tsunade was gritting her teeth as her fellow Kages gave her weird looks. She promises to teach Kirito a lesson after the war. Madara, with his eternal man Gekyo Sharingan and the indomitable power of the Rinnegan, gazed upon the Kages with an unsettling calmness. The moon above cast an eerie glow, reflecting the gravity of the impending battle. His closes, this was only possible because he had unlimited chakra. This is actually also the case with Hashirama. And Kirito really now wanted to know just what Hashirama could achieve and his base chakra is so much more and almost unlimited and then stag sage mode on top of that. Yeah, Madara winning might be more or less plot convenience as Kirito didn't see Hashirama losing that easily, especially not that quickly no matter how powerful and broken Rinnegan is. On the other side, the fight between Abito and Kirito was going on. 
Kirito first tried to attack the ghetto statue but it didn't work, the defense of the ghetto statue was insane. He tried but he couldn't damage the damned statue at all. Kirito used all of his power to damage the ghetto statue but didn't work. And ultimately he had to stop, considering Abito was starting to absorb the biju back. Shit, what the hell is this ugly ass statue made of, Kirito cursed under his breath and rushed towards the Naruto. Naruto was right now trying to stop Biju back from the ghetto statue's mouth. He tried to help out both Killer B and Naruto to stop the Biju from getting absorbing inside the ghetto statue. But that was to no avail. The resistance that both Kirito and Naruto face was so powerful that even with the combined force, they couldn't stop the Biju was getting absorbed by the ghetto statue. Hell man, what the fuck is this? In the anime this was not that hard, Kirito muttered to himself. And the biggest problem here was that Abito was also targeting Naruto here. Actually, this only happened because Abito absorbed one tail, two tail, third tail and five tail immediately after Naruto freed four tails. So the resistance that Abito was facing here was not as much as in the anime. How come this one I lover didn't go as the canon? Kirito cursed, if only Abito hadn't acted in time, Kirito wouldn't be facing this issue at all. After trying he knew that there was no stopping Abito right now, the resistance here was too much for just Kirito and Naruto to stop. Besides the biju that Abito took in, there was another biju but they were still under Abito's control. The only biju which was not under Abito's control was nine tails, four tails and eight tails. All this biju and Jinchuriki tried to stop Abito but their power was not enough, Unlike the anime, Abito was dealing with much less biju here and thus capturing them was easier and possible. Shit, Kirito muttered to himself. Saw that the ghetto statue had also captured Naruto in his place. Think think think, Kirito panicked. Unlike him, Naruto would die if Kurama was rib out of him. With swift precision, Kirito replaced himself in Naruto's stead, shielding him from the malevolent grasp of the ghetto statue. The sinister force, hungry for chakra and life, engulfed Kirito, who stood resolute in the face of impending danger. The worst case for him is not being able to use Nine Tails' powers while for Naruto it's death and this time around there is no other Kurama to fall back to. But Naruto didn't know that, he didn't know that Kirito most likely wouldn't die if Tail Beast Chakra was ripped out of his system as he could just generate that chakra later on in time. Naruto, wide-eyed and filled with dread witnessed Kirito's sacrifice. The ghetto statue, now focused on its unexpected prey, attempted to draw Kirito's chakra into its abyss. Yet, Kirito, with unwavering determination, resisted the pull, his will standing firm against the malevolent force. Kirito tried but he knew that he couldn't stop the abido at this. Hashirama shows a giant meteor coming towards him. He narrowed his eyes and finally sighed. He finally decided to go all out and close his eyes. Just like Kirito Hashirama entered into Sage Mode within seconds. He was the best Sage Mode user there is outside Kirito and Kirito was using his system. The Shinobi Alliance, paralyzed by the impending disaster, stared skyward as the Celestial Behemoth descended. In the eleventh hour, a resonant voice cut through the air. Hashirama Senju stepped forward, his expression determined. Drawing upon the immense Senjutsu Chakra well within him, Hashirama activated his true several thousand hands Buddha technique, a jutsu so immense it dwarfed even the approaching meteor. Gargantuan hands, each the size of mountains, manifested from Hashirama's chakra, intertwining to form an awe-inspiring colossus. The true several thousand hands Buddha rose, dwarfing the meteor with its divine presence. Hashirama, atop the colossal statue, channeled his power to halt the celestial threat. The impact was cataclysmic. The meteor collided with the Buddha, causing shockwaves that echoed across the battlefield. Dust and debris erupted into the air as the opposing forces shielded their eyes from the blinding display of power. When the dust settled, the colossal Buddha stood triumphant, its hands still raised in defiance. Hashirama, visibly drained but resolute, surveyed the aftermath. The meteor, reduced to fragments, scattered harmlessly across the battlefield. The Shinobi Alliance, witnessing Hashirama's divine intervention, erupted into cheers. Madara was not surprised, no one knew the true power of Hashirama Senju better than him. But this was just the start, the fight was surely different than anime and Hashirama was not inferior here to Hashirama. Finally, after dealing with the meteor, 
the giant Buddha turns its gaze back to Madara and his Susanoo. Ready to restart the fight once again. Kirito was not feeling anything special, he thought that he would at least feel some kind of pain or something but there was nothing, he was aware and fully conscious when the ghetto statue was absorbing his nine-tailed chakra. Maybe this is something to do with the system. Anyways take it away not like I can't regenerate it back, Kirito muttered in frustration. He did try to use Hiration but he couldn't. Again he was not sure why, it should technically work without any dimensional disturbance. He saw Naruto watching and panicking. Man I need to tell that idiot that I am alright, but but. Kirito was rapidly losing chakra and his power. Shit. Naruto was worried, he was trying to use all his power to pull out his brother but to no avail, he couldn't do anything. And saw all the biju getting absorbed by the ghetto statue. One after one, all the biju got absorbed by the ugly statue. Unfortunately, he didn't see Kirito getting out of his Kurama state just before his nine-tailed chakra was absorbed. Hashirama stood resolute, the remnants of his true several thousand hands Buddha dissipating into the atmosphere. The battle unfolded with a series of blindingly fast exchanges. Hashirama, his wood-style jutsu creating a labyrinth of branches, sought to ensnare Madara. The Uchiha, with the fluid grace of the Uchiha Taijutsu, danced through the wooden tendrils, dodging with preternatural speed. Madara had many tricks on his sleeves but more or less Hashirama's superior healing and sage mode pretty much negated all of those. Their clashes echoed with a familiarity that only those who had shaped the course of history could comprehend. The battlefield transformed into an arena of nature versus power, as the first Hokage's wood style countered the Uchiha's Sharingan-infused techniques. The Susanoo, a manifestation of Madara's indomitable will, materialized. Its ethereal presence clashed against Hashirama's towering wooden constructs. You should give Kirito kun a raise Tsunade sama. We are practically alive here only because he brought your grandfather back to life, Turumi Mei said with mouth open wide, the fight happening in front of her and other shinobi and kages was almost unreal. Tsunade just nodded not even listening to what her fellow kage was saying, her sole attention was on the fight between the legendary ninjas. Hashirama, drawing upon the Senju's unparalleled life force, summoned roots from the ground, attempting to bind Madara. The Uchiha, however, responded with his mastery over the Susanoo, deflecting the roots with precise strikes. Their confrontation reached a new level, his eyes gleaming with a newfound intensity. Nature itself responded to his presence, amplifying the potency of his techniques. The battlefield transformed into a realm of vibrant energy as Hashirama channeled the very essence of the natural world. Madara, undeterred, activated his Rinnegan. The battlefield became a canvas of power as Hashirama's sage-enhanced techniques clashed against Uchiha's otherworldly abilities. While this was happening, Kirito found himself in his lair. His secret training area, he teleported himself out as soon as all of his Kurama chakras ran out and his connection with Ghetto statue disconnected. But now he was completely out of chakra. Man, this is so wrong time for this to happen, Kirito complained. Kirito Kuen, but at this time he heard a voice. He tried to move his body as his body was even almost paralyzed without much energy in his body. He saw a beautiful girl with red hair. Karen, Kirito said a smile coming to his face. I need your help please, he immediately said. Good thing he came to this place. Naruto saw his brother getting devoured by the ghetto statue, well at least he believes that that happened. And now Abito was ready to become the Jinchuriki of the Ten Tails. He didn't yet absorb Naruto or Killer Bee but he got the Eight Tails Chakra before when Itachi went to capture Killer Bee and now he got the Nine Tails Chakra. With this, he had enough power to transform himself into the Jinchuriki of Nine Tails. As the battlefield trembled with the unleashed power of the Ten Tails, Abito stepped forward with a resolute gaze. The dark energy emanating from the ghetto statue enveloped him, and his form underwent a chilling transformation. The tailed beast's chakra, now fused into a malevolent force, surged towards Abido. The once human Uchiha became the focal point of this overwhelming power, a vessel for the might of the ten tails. His eyes glowed with an eerie intensity as the transformation took hold. He started to look like those Atsutsuki. Abido's body contorted and convulsed, shrouded in an ominous cloak of chakra. The once distinguishable features now obscured by the dark aura, he ascended into the form of the Ten Tails Jinchuriki. With a haunting roar, Abito emerged as the harbinger of the Ten Tails' might. 
His eyes, now reflecting the ancient power within him, revealed the magnitude of the transformation. Abito had become the vessel for a force that transcended the boundaries of human and beast, a living embodiment of unparalleled power. I don't have time to waste on you anymore, Abito who was already a little short on the grey matter before now became completely mad. He just now wanted to activate his plan and thus he flew off toward where the giant tree was. That's the place where he can activate his moon eye plan. On the other side, all the Kages looked horrified, Madara pulled a trick and ended up absorbing the same chakra of Hashirama. Although till now the fight was going pretty equal now it was not the case. So, like, Madara and Hashirama were having this big ninja showdown, right? And Madara, being all sneaky, decided to play a trick on Hashirama. He pretended to be all tired and on the verge of losing which is impossible considering both of them were Edo Tensei. So Hashirama thought, oh, maybe it's the time to use talk no jutsu, Kurito said its only effect after kicking the enemy's ass right. Hashirama was totally surprised and caught off guard. This let Madara win, and almost right on time considering Abito was coming towards them. The horrors in the faces of others. But Madara didn't even bother fighting other shinobi or kages. He was not there to kill them, never. He was here to activate his plan and save the world. That's why he was there. His eyes saw Abshio coming and a smirk appeared on his face. Black Setsu was ready on the other side, this time around Abito won't even get time to experience the power of ten tails. Madara acted in the cannon just because he didn't want to hurry, not to mention he wanted to fight Hashirama. But here, he already has fought Hashirama and won. Now it was his time to revive and take the power of ten tails from Abito. While this was happening, ha, Kurito-kun, you are too rough aha, Kurito's eyes twitch, why this girl is acting like this, he was just drinking her blood to regain his energy. He saw Karen rubbing her legs together while also breathing heavily. Man, why the hell I am here doing it? Well I had to weigh to handle this as well but I rather not use it until it's absolutely necessary, Kurito muttered to himself and sigh, just hoping to get his chakra back and rejoin the war. Why, Abito asked in God if only Kurito was here at this time he had enough way to answer this, why, because why not you fucking idiot, of course, he used you. Currently, Abito is held captive by Black Zetsu uses Abito's Rinnegan to revive Madara. And now he was taking his Ringan back. While this act of betrayal was happening, the entire shinobi force plus the Kages were enjoying the show. Yeah serve him right, motherfew asterisk Kerr was a pain that he ass, ah, uh, although I might die in a few minutes now I can do that in peace, man, all this sand is getting in the way. Someone, please use wind jutsu to move it, sand, huh? Is this alabasta? Man, how come I still can't find the sea? Those bastards, how come they all got lost this much? Naruto and the others haven't arrived still yet. The forest was much farther away from the desert area. Abito only came faster because he could fly. We need to fight, we can't give up here, said Reikich. But even his voice was trembling a little. The power which Madara showed today was beyond his comprehension. And someone like Hashirama too couldn't stop him. He had no idea how he gonna stop Madara now. While this was happening, suddenly a spatial distortion took place and appeared two white hair individuals and one black hair man. To the Kanoha people, these faces were much recognizable. Lord Second, Jiraiya-sama, who is that man with Uchiha logo in his shirt? Oh you idiot, see closely, he is Uchiha Shirsui. And while this happens, another spatial fluctuation took place. And came two blonde-haired men with one black hair man. This was none other than Minato with Naruto and Sasuke. Naruto, Tsunade was surprised to see Naruto all alright but was glad. Lord Fourth, Yup Minato's popularity was all-time high at this time. After all, he alone was the honor cough asterisk cough. But the inclusion of Sasuke makes this situation much more strange. Sasuke, Sakura looked and said with much complication in her voice. Throughout the shinobi world, at this time, all the Edo Tensei that Orochimaru revived were felling and the shinobi alliance was crushing the leftover white Zetsu. They were ordered to join the main battle in the sand desert after they were done. This is all thanks to Toborama and Shursue. Jiraiya was also there with Itachi for the same reason but they were beaten by the second Hokage and Shursue. So after Itachi was gone, Jiraiya with the help of Toborama came to the battlefield. 
The same was the case with Minato as when he felt Abito's chakra skyrocketing thanks to his sage mode, he went back and only halfway he found his son making his way to the desert area. Following after Abito. He did ask why when Kirito was with them but no answer came. Minato was just stunned only for a second before his genius mind kicked in, he knew how potent Horatian could be and until now he knew his son's mastery of this technique was no worse than his. Although he couldn't sense Kirito he believed that Kirito would be alright. And thus he brings Naruto and Sasuke here. Sasuke came back to consciousness but was injured pretty badly. Fugaku did put some sense inside him. Don't worry Bachan, Sasuke will help us, right Sasuke, Naruto asked, the fact of his brother set aside for now. Sasuke just narrowed his eyes, he too was confused as hell. The chakra inside him but making his own decision wrong. And it was affecting him. But he slowly nodded and said. Yes I will help you take care of Madara. This was enough for Sakura who was barely holding herself back to jolt into action and heal her Sasuke Kuan. We will get the backup soon, Tsunade said as he got information from Inoichi that all the armies were moving towards the sand plain. But it will take time. I don't think we have time for that, Hokage, Anoki said. It doesn't matter, numbers are useless against Madara, Tobarama narrowed his red eyes zoning directly at the figure of Madara whose body was changing as time goes. Before their eyes, Madara's entire body turns ghostly white and horn appears on his forehead. Madara, the guy who went Allen with the ten tails, versus a whole crew of heavy hitters. Naruto, Sasuke, Minato, the five Kages, Jiraiya, Tobarama, and Hiruzen. It's like a shinobi all-star team facing off against a single man and this motherfew asterisk cur was manhandling them. Madara, now the ten tails Jinchuriki, was flexing his newfound muscle. It was like he hit the shinobi gym and chugged a power-up smoothie but seriously, the six path powers are all broken af. The dude was on another level, and the battlefield was his playground. Naruto, Sasuke, and the gang weren't holding back either. They threw everything they had at Madara, but it was like trying to stop a freight train with a feather. None of the chakra attacks first of all were working, Madara just absorbed them with his Rinnegan. Or just neglect them with his truth-seeking orbs. And then there were those limbo clones. Even the fastest shinobi like Minato or Tobarama was no exception to this. The five kages were throwing their best jutsu, Minato was teleporting all over the place, and Jiraiya was summoning toads. But Madara was just too much. The biggest problem was how they were attacking him, ninjutsu was clearly not working and they needed taijutsu and senjutsu here to do any kind of damage. But unfortunately, only Kirito knew this at this point. Tobarama and Hiruzen were pulling out every trick in the Kanoha handbook, but Madara is fine, it's just that in front of absolute power, these tricks don't matter much. The battlefield looked like a canvas of chaos. Trees were getting uprooted, Susanoo was clashing with Raisingans, and fire jutsu was lighting up the sky. It was the kind of fight that made you glad you weren't living in the Naruto world. Naruto and Sasuke, with their powers cranked up to eleven, tried to tag-team Madara. But Madara was weaving through their attacks, laughing like he was on a casual stroll. And again the biggest problem here was those black truth-seeking orbs. As the battle raged on, you could see the exhaustion on the faces of the shinobi but none of them were dead. Madara never planned to kill him from the beginning. He was just playing with them. This is not working, he is too strong, Hiruzen added. We can't let his plan succeed. He has to stop him, I don't know how but we have to stop him. Naruto shouted from the side. But how we can't even touch him, those black things are just cheats, where is Kirito, why he is not here? Usually, he is the first one who wants to be involved in fights like this, Tsunade asked with confusion. All that anger has to be transferred to some place. I have noticed ninjutsu is not working on him. We need to use something else, Minato said. This was the second time he had felt this powerless. He clenches his fist, trying to find any possible way out of this situation. Are you sure you want to go now, you can rest a little more you know, Karen said with a pout. Ha, huh, don't worry. I am feeling completely fine now all thanks to you and your healing jutsu Karen. Thank you, Kirito said and smiled. Thanks to Karen he was able to get back to his tip-top condition but he was lacking nine-tail chakra now. He was feeling it already starting to generate inside him but it will take a long time before he can use it again. Damn that Abito, 
Carrito internally muttered. Well I better get going now, I am sure they are getting their ass kicked but a beat -o while I am not there, Carrito amused and just to exist in style he put his middle and index finger on his forehead and then with a flash he was out. You might be reinforced, but this will make no chance. You are nothing but pebbles. Madara said while looking at the reinforcement that came to aid Naruto and the Shinobi Alliance. Kakashi and Guy were among the army which came. But the situation was still not good enough at this time, even with the combined effort of five Kages, Naruto, Sasuke, and even other powerful shinobi like Jiraiya and late Hokages. Madara was getting the upper hand, they simply didn't have any attack which could damage Madara. Well, there were two attack types, Naruto and Minato's sage mode and also Guy's taijutsu. We have to do something, he is playing with us, Kakashi who had gotten updated information about him from others said. Don't worry Kakashi, there is always a way. Remember, there are four basic disciplines of a shinobi. Ninjutsu, Taijutsu, Genjutsu and Fujitsu. Remember before we even learn how to infuse chakra in our body. We learn how to fight without bodies. If anything with chakra doesn't work on him then we just have to use Taijutsu, Guy said and started to work towards it. Th gate a view open, shouted Guy. Guy unleashed the formidable power of the seventh gate. Chakra surged through his veins, transforming him into a blazing cyclone of raw, unrestrained strength. Madara adorned with the divine six paths powers, stood unfazed. His Rinnegan eyes glowed ominously as he prepared to face the relentless assault. The battlefield crackled with an electric tension as the two titans locked eyes. The blue vapor of burning sweat and chakra. Madara snorted. It's an insult that you hold back the red vapor when facing me, Madara said. Guy lunged forward with a speed that blurred the lines between illusion and reality. It was almost space-bending. His fists, wreathed in the fiery aura of the seventh gate, struck with a force that threatened to reshape the very fabric of the cosmos. Madara, displaying the fluid grace of his godlike abilities, dodged and weaved through the onslaught. The air quivered with the resonance of clashing forces as Guy unleashed a barrage of kicks and punches, each blow echoing like a thunderous drumbeat. Madara, the stoic maestro of battle, countered with the ethereal might of the truth-seeking balls, forming an impenetrable shield against Guy's onslaught. And no matter how powerful, the seventh gate is still not enough again Madara with six path powers. As the battle escalated, Guy reached a crescendo of power. His attacks became a hurricane of destruction, a tempest that threatened to consume everything in its path. But still, there was only a simple disdain on his face, like mocking Guy's efforts. Like asking that you are not doing what you can. With a calculated maneuver, Madara channeled the divine power of his Rinnegan. Limbo, border jail manifested, and ethereal shadows mirrored his every move, creating an illusionary dance that confounded even Guy's heightened senses. The Taijutsu master found himself battling not one, but multiple Madaras. But the only problem here was that Madara couldn't sense the limbo, the only thing going here for Guy was that Madara still had not absorbed the full power of Ten Tails. There is still power left inside the giant tree which he is yet to absorb. Undeterred, Guy unleashed the evening elephant, a whirlwind of rapid-fire blows that transcended the boundaries of human capability. Each strike carried the weight of his burning determination. Madara, facing the onslaught, began to discern the relentless rhythm of Guy's assault. Overall the power was not enough, but unlike the anime, there was more help for Guy here. Both Naruto and Sasuke entered into the fight, trying to help out Guy. Others also didn't hold back. But the problem is just that, there is still no way for others beside Guy to attack Madara. This time around, Naruto never had an aha movement which suddenly made him realize that sage mode would work. But what else they could have done, just try to take down Madara. Oh I assure you that this is no end, but the blue beast is no more, it's time for the red beast to emerge, Guy said and started to walk forward. The fight went on pretty devastating still now them and now the only thing Guy could think of was the open the eighth gate. It will surely take his life, but he knows one thing. His father told him that it was not about being strong or completing the mission. It's about protecting the important people he cherishes. This technique was given to him by his father so that he could do that, that is why he fought so hard all this time. He walked and then started to pass the other Kages, Kakashi. Inner gate formation, Guy shouted start ran up, 
he was just about to open his eighth gate but just before that something appeared in front of him. Like out of nowhere someone appears there. Bam, Carito, what are you doing, Guy shouted. Yup, it was Carito who appeared beside Naruto but Guy just happened to be passing by at that time. Me? What are you doing Guy sensei why so hurry, Carito snapped back. Oh nothing nothing, just burning my youth, Guy said while laughing and looking at Madara again. Oh that sounds interesting but would you mind I give it a go before you kick the finale, Carito asked while looking at Madara. What the fuck, where is Abito? Don't tell me I lose the chance to kick his ass, Carito's eye twitched. He honestly was not expecting things to go up to this point, he actually initially planned to end this matter just with Abito if possible. But I guess hell will freeze over before things go my way, Carito muttered and complained to the universe. You are the boy who fought with me before didn't you, Madara looked at the one-handed blonde shinobi who used a sword. Ah oh, yeah. Now it is time to continue our fight, you see I don't have the habit of leaving a fight incomplete, Carito said and took out his sword. Oh, so you wish to dance again, come then. I too wish to see that strange power of yours again, Madara said with interest on his face. That strange power is hockey, Carito said as he started to walk towards Madara. Naruto, get everyone out of there, I need space to let loose, Carito said while walking towards Madara. Carito this is not the time to work alone, Tsunade was about to say much more but one look from Carito and she understood. Because Carito's eyes were slightly glowing red. Her eyes widened and remembered the power Carito was about to release. Get out of here, we need to give him space, otherwise we will be caught in the attack, Tsunade said. Are you sure Hokage, asked the other Kages they had seen firsthand just how terrifying Madara is. In under a minute, everyone is strong enough to leave the place. So, are you ready to dance again, dance huh, Kurito mused as he entered into sage mode. His eyes were surrounded by orange pigmentation. And with sage mode came a heightened sense of senses. He senses that others have already been out of his attack range and is ready. It's been a while since I really let loose, not to mention never even use my hockey at its max either. Let's see, Kirito said as closing his eyes. Madara was sensing something but this power was unknown to him. Kirito took his time, he thought to have control over his hockey but not as much when he was in sage mode. His hockey right now is much stronger, and focusing it on Madara is hard. Come on now, you don't expect me to wait here for night, Madara said. But then suddenly a chill went through his spine. Kirito's eyes blazed as the formidable power of Conqueror's hockey came forth. The air crackled with an indomitable force, and a surge of invisible energy radiated from Kirito. Kirito's red eyes clash right at Madara's as the world starts to lose color and even the heaven and earth start to shake under the presence of a conqueror. Madara, accustomed to facing all manners of jutsu and techniques, felt an unexpected chill running down his spine. The conqueror's hockey, a force that transcended the physical realm, held a strength that resonated with the very essence of a warrior's spirit. As Kirito unleashed the conqueror's hockey, the environment itself seemed to bow to his overwhelming presence. The air pulsated with an invisible pressure, causing even the mightiest of trees to quiver. The ground trembled as if paying homage to the conqueror's will. Madara, a veteran of countless battles, found himself momentarily taken aback. The conqueror's hockey wasn't just a display of power, it was a manifestation of Kirito's sheer dominance. The very fabric of the battlefield bent to Kirito's indomitable spirit, and even the most seasoned warriors couldn't help but feel the weight of his commanding presence. In that moment, Kirito's hockey echoed like a war cry, challenging the very core of Madara's strength. Once a drunken dragon told a monkey, that in the heart of the sea, only hockey reigned supreme, Kirito said with a smirk. Madara could feel it, this was the feeling he was waiting for. This made his blood pump again inside him, this was the first time he had experienced conqueror's hockey. Kirito slowly took out his sword, and slowly the shiny sword started to be covered with black hockey. So, you want to dance is that it, Kirito smirked looking at Madara and the sweat on his forehead after the hockey he released. And with a simple leap, he rushes towards Madara. The bastard was flying so he also had to jump up to him. Uzumaki style, water divider, Kirito shouted and a powerful hockey attack once again rushed towards Madara. Madara by now was already out of his daze and was ready to fight. In fact, he was showing a smile like never before. He was looking forward to this fight. 
He dodged the upcoming attack and moved his Limbo clones towards Kirito. Kirito had observation hockey though, he moved out of the way before even they were close and kept on rushing towards Madara. Madara's eyes widened seeing Kirito avoiding these Limbo clones. Madara, with eyes ablaze, blurred into motion, launching. A barrage of chakran-fused projectiles at Kirito. Kirito, a blur of swordplay, deflected each attack with precision. As Kirito was not using chakra right now, his attacks were actually effective against Madara. As the speed increased to others' eyes, they were close to a blur. Madara summoned Susanoo. Kirito just had a smirk and directly rushed with his sword slicing through the chakra construct with sheer determination. Another interesting thing about Haki was that it was not inferior to chakra. In fact, Haki is better in raw power. Kirito simply teleported from his place and appeared a little further from the area. Then another Haki shock was sent towards Madara and although it didn't stop him it did stunt him for a second. This was the exact time when Kunai which Kirito threw up at just the right time came close to Madara. Instantly appearing in front of Madara. Kirito swung his sword with only one hand. Madara couldn't move in time and Kirito took the first blood. With just a simple slash he was able to cut open the entire chest. But that was not enough, Guy was able to practically eradicate Madara's entire body but even then Madara was able to regenerate himself. Kirito is strong but not that strong, but whilst Guy was much more stronger than him with his eighth game open, he couldn't endure it much longer. Kirito has endurance on his side. Not to mention, he has one other trick on his sleeves which he has yet to use. We need to help him, Naruto on the side shouted and others who too didn't know about hockey kind of agreed with Naruto. No, his hockey will make you unconscious before you know it, Tsunade said, after all this time she has learned how hockey works. Especially Conqueror's hockey. Madara matches Kirito's speed turns his truth seeker orb into a sword of his own and rushes at him. Kirito was ready, he too was holding a black sword, a sword made out of hockey that is. Both the swords collided and another huge shock and sounds came from the clash. But Kirito's physical strength was not enough to handle Madara. Even with armament hockey, when using a sword, having two hands is always much better. What happened, where is that power you showed just now, Madara asked with excitement. Kirito was already giving a good fight but he could still find no problem handling him. Kirito also notices it and jumps back. Well I am still not proficient in this one but what the hell, here goes nothing, Kirito smirked and the intensity of Conqueror's hockey around him started to increase. Madara was about to rush at Kirito but seeing the intensity of Conqueror's hockey started to increase he stayed back, wanting to see what's going on. This power was new to even him. What is going on, why is happening, why did Kirito stop, Sakura asked with confusion. I am not sure. Naruto knew Kirito best beside Ino. Ino was still not there so everyone could only ask him. But even he was not sure what Kirito was planning to do now. I never saw One Piece but I do know that Conqueror's Hockey is the strongest kind of hockey out there, but not everyone who can use Conqueror's Hockey can use this hockey to its fullest potential. But once someone masters it, Kirito thought and black lighting started to appear around him. The black lightning was crackling around him, and as it started the black lightning concentrated on his sword. His sage mode was already making his normal hockey much more potent, hockey emission and conqueror's attachment, Kirito smiled. Hope I can pull it off this time, Kirito said and got ready. First form, shaving flash, Kirito thought and instantly vanished from his place and appeared in front of Madara. Of course, Madara saw it coming and swung his own sword again. Once again the swords collided, but this time the power of Kirito's attack was even beyond Madara. As soon as the sword connected, Haki traveled from Kirito's body and entered Madara's body. Blurred, he with just one contact let out a mouth full of blood. And instinctively jumped back. The shinobi standing on the side who was worried about Kirito all this time, had wide eyes at the sudden turn of the table. Oh boy, I am still not very good at this, but I guess I can do it, just need to focus. Need to change my game. Can't do multiple light attacks and rely on my speed here, I am not that good yet in this, so need to take this guy down with minimum movements. The fight between Kirito and Madara was reaching higher and higher heights. The entire sand plane was shaking with every clash between them. Although Kirito was hardly holding up his hockey to that powerful level, it was working. 
Madara kept on healing himself but Kirito was hardly giving himself time, limitless chakra, or whatever. There has to be a limit of his healing and that is what Kirito was bunking on. After all, Kirito didn't need to completely kill Madara with his attacks. He just had to render him useless just for enough time to start his plan. Madara for all his lust for battle and all was now panicking. None of his techniques were working on Kirito. He usually won't have worried about much but Kirito Haki was not just damaging him physically but also his chakra. Every time Kirito's Haki attack connected with Madara, his chakra was getting destroyed. Madara was already half of his chakra by this point. So yeah he was panicking. He flies off trying to shake Kirito out, he knows that in the long run, he could win easily but without enough chakra, he can't activate his plan. But Kirito was not giving Madara any chance to get out. Alright, I better just end use it, I will not be able to move after this so I better make this count, Kirito said and once again powerful Haki exited inside as black lighting started to appear around him. Inner gate formation, Kirito muttered to himself. Th gate is his limit actually. He has learned to open up to the 8th gate already but only a fool will do that or if that person has a suicide wish. But right now he has to push his limits. Without pushing his limits, he can't take care of Madara. Th gate of view open, Kirito shouted and like a forced awakening, the power of the inner gate appeared around him. Shaving flash, and with that, Kirito vanished from his place. Madara was moving towards the giant tree but just before he could, like blue lightning Kirito appeared in front of Madara. Here goes nothing, Uzumaki style one sword flow, Kirito's hands tightened around the hilt of his sword and swung with all his might. With the physical boost and hockey intertwined in his sword, it was almost like the space itself bent when Kirito swung his sword. And with just that, Kirito divided Madara in half before he could even react. Kirito immediately let go of his seventh gate as he was hard enough to hold on to it for just two seconds. The higher one goes into the inner gate, the harder it gets to unlock the gate and maintain its power. But Kirito's eyes widen as suddenly unimaginable pain shoots through his body as the underline of the seventh gate runs out. No get moving, he will heal if I don't hurry, Kira torment himself as he raised his hand up to bite. He needs to summon, he needs to bring forth the Shinigami. Bite, Kirito didn't just bite his thump, he imitated a certain time traveler freedom fighter. Blood flowed out, he did the hand sign with the same injured single hand and was ready to summon the Shinigami. But just then, blurred, Kirit find himself impaled by something, before even looking down at what impaled him or who did it, Kirito just realized that he was not using his sense right now, damn it he again let down his guard. Looking down he saw he was impaled by a black shadow. Zetsu, this moth, Kirito wanted to give many curses he was thrown out. His body was flown and smashed to the ground. No, Naruto's eyes widened as he saw Kirito getting impaled by black Zetsu. While Naruto and others wanted to act, and join the fight, seeing that Black Zetsu backstabbed Kirito. But before they could even reach Kirito and Madara. Something even more groundbreaking happened. Madara who thought that Zetsu was on his side, thought he had everything under control. Little did he know, Black Zetsu had a different agenda, and it wasn't exactly a team player move. The sneaky little puppeteer pulled a fast one on Madara. He wasn't just the lackey following orders he was the puppet master pulling the strings. In the heat of the battle, just when Madara thought he had it all figured out and Kirito was out, Black Zetsu did the ultimate betrayal shuffle. He stabbed Madara in the back, figuratively, not literally. The shock on Madara's face was probably worth a thousand words. Betrayal has that effect, you know. Black Zetsu spilt the beans about the whole plan, how it was playing both sides from the get-go. The guy had been orchestrating this grand scheme for eons, and Madara was just a pawn in the puppet show. The shinobi world was left with its jaw on the floor. Madara was played like a fiddle. Black Zetsu, reveling in the chaos, was ready to take the spotlight. He couldn't even move when he was captured by Black Zetsu. From that point onward, Black Zetsu's plan started as Madara's body started to change. The guy's body started doing some freaky transformation. It was like watching a horror movie where the monster just won't stay dead. Madara's limbs twisted and contorted, like something out of a nightmare. People were standing there, jaws on the floor, wondering what the heck was happening. For a second they even forgot about Kirito. The air got heavy as Kagaya took the stage, with all her majestic. 
She emerged with an otherworldly grace, her presence sending shivers down everyone's spines. The battlefield, once a chaotic mess, now fell silent as Kagaya asserted her dominance. The shinobi world went from facing Madara's grand plan to dealing with Kagaya's cosmic takeover. It was like trading one big bad for an even bigger bad. Kagaya, with eyes that had seen eons, surveyed the world with an air of ancient authority. Kagaya looked around and the first thing she did was to look at both Naruto and Sasuke standing there. Besides the Kages and some Edo Tensei called forth by Kirito, those two were the only ones who could have now fought Kagaya. While this was happening, medics like Stunade and Sakura were trying to find Kirito but were unable, as Kirito was nowhere to be found. The battlefield quivered with tension as Kagaya, the ancient progenitor of Chakra, faced off against Naruto and Sasuke, the last hope of the shinobi world. Kagaya's ethereal presence loomed over them, her power echoing through the air. Naruto, his eyes filled with unwavering determination, charged forward with a barrage of Rasengan. Kagaya, however, effortlessly shifted between dimensions, avoiding the onslaught. Sasuke, calculating as ever, unleashed a barrage of Amaterasu flames, attempting to trap Kagaya within the inextinguishable inferno. Kagaya, undeterred, manipulated the very fabric of reality, creating portals that twisted space around her. Naruto and Sasuke, in a display of synchronized teamwork, attempted to outmaneuver Kagaya's spatial manipulations. The battlefield became a chaotic dance of jutsu, with each move countered by Kagaya's cosmic prowess. The duo pressed on, Naruto weaving through the fabric of Kagaya's attacks with his agility, and Sasuke utilizing his Rinnegan to predict her next move. The air crackled with the intensity of their struggle. Sensing an opportunity, Naruto entered Sage of the Six Paths mode, his chakra surging to celestial heights. Sasuke, drawing upon the indomitable power of his Rinnegan, launched a barrage of high-level ninjutsu. The duo unleashed a combination attack, attempting to overwhelm Kagaya. However, Kagaya, the primordial force, countered with her truth-seeking balls, an impenetrable defense that repelled their assault. The battlefield quaked as the clash of power reached a fever pitch. Sasuke, eyes ablaze, activated his Rinnegan space-time ninjutsu, attempting to outmaneuver Kagaya's ever-shifting dimensions. Naruto, utilizing his immense chakra reserves, entered tailed beast mode, the raw power of the nine tails surging through him. In a daring move, Sasuke and Naruto synchronized their attacks, creating a vortex of elemental devastation. Kagaya, momentarily caught off guard, found herself ensnared within the tempest of their combined power.